I forgot that I sent that photo to to Dynamo viewers to use for the tech. Uh, it's welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the second annual uh, Pokemon Let's Go EV Pikachu tournament. Uh, I'm Benji, joined by Kahuna Pat and Felix Melior for uh, one of. Uh, I mean, this is going to be an absolutely exquisite race. The Swiss format is going to throw up these close races all the way through, and we have three really top quality runners today Randall East Cheese, Head Bob, and New Amber. And I'm well aware that the rest of the commentary booth is, is as excited for this as I am. Definitely oh, excited. Yeah. Definitely missed the, the memo on the, the profile pictures, but happy to, to be here. Really looking forward to a, a strong race from three contenders today. Oh, yeah. This is going to be, I think, a very close race. Two of our three racers are members of the Sub 3 Club. But of course, when it comes to race, race strats, absolutely anything can happen. If any one of these racer wins the race, I would not be surprised. No. Uh, Randall and New Amber, as you mentioned, you know, they're at the sub three club so they were in uh in the top pot heading into the tournament head bob was in pot two uh but pulled uh pulled the upset in round one uh ergote was the uh was the number one seed in their original match but were able to able to upset the odds there so to speak and uh yeah so they finished at the time of 306 28 uh randall uh, beat Poker Tax, Poker Taxity, and Burner. Uh, his race time was three oh two thirty four, and New Amber had a, a really strong race as well, up against Kerbis and Leggy Starscream, and they finished with a time of three oh three fifty six. And given that it's a race scenario, and you kind of you just have to roll with the punches, you can't afford to to, to reset halfway through because things weren't going your way. Then uh, you really do have to. Uh, yeah, it, it's a slightly different skill, I think, to performing a, a straight up speed run so those are three very good times absolutely and i'm seeing here that both amber and head bob got girl starters today which is always good to see and i'm actually surprised i came late as most people in this call know uh one of our racers who i wasn't expecting to run eevee is running eevee yeah uh randall can kind of flip back and forth between the two but going with going with Eevee for this one. Yeah, uh, he was on insane pace in his race last round, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to replicate that luck again. Yeah, it's it. I do wonder if you're so well versed in both games, how how much you might accidentally have one kind of thought creep in and overlap the other. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, as we said, three top quality runners, so it's going to be an excellent race. Uh, Headbog, Headbog picking the, the, the fastest boy one, which so did Randall. Boring. Amber going uh, for the crowd. Favorite of girl three. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, it does not affect the, the speed run at all, uh, but it's just nice to have a bit of variety, I think. And technically girl three is canon, so there is that. Is, is that true? I did not know that. Yeah, in I, I want to say it's the, the manga. It's actually girl three, or it could be like a TV show. I can't remember which one, but in the canon, it's girl three. Yeah, uh, Chase is the canon uh, boy trainer name, and Elaine is the canon girl trainer name, and yeah. Trace is the canon rival name, or as we know them, they're just called One. One, or sometimes Eleven. Oh, yeah, I have seen that. I even saw a question mark in the first round, so who knows? We're really branching <laughs> out now. There's a couple of people that have realized that you can connect, uh, I think it's Bluetooth keyboards to the Switch, think, and they're using that. I think you can just plug in, plug a USB keyboard in. Oh, I guess you can, yeah. Either way, it's exquisite, and we're getting some variety, and we even saw a starter named Scam last round. I don't know if Randall's gonna, like, repeat that this time, but that'd be funny. We'll see. Uh, this is just- oh! Sorry, I've just had a cat jump on my desk, it caught me off guard. No, oh, that'll always happen. Yeah, not the, not the cat in the picture, by the way. There's, there are many cats from 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 deep in the cat cave. Uh, the first bit's very boring, standard. Set your options, go outside. Uh, you're going to catch your starter, which you can actually glean a little bit of information from, depending on which version you're running. I believe it's the starting CP, right? The combined point value that shows on the screen that kind of helps tick off what nature it might be. 
You can in Pikachu, yes. Um, so if you look at New Amber's screen at the top right, there'll be a level 5, and below that will be CP. If it's 27, the Pikachu is neutral, and if it's 26, it's not neutral, and we're going to need some more information before we can see if this Pikachu is quote-unquote runnable. I have a feeling at least two of our runners are just going to YOLO, not even check the nature, but, you know, we'll see. In the moment of truth... 26. 26. All right. Well, we're going to have to see what natures all of these are. And I'm not super versed with Pika, so hey, Chad, if you don't mind looking out for me, that'd be great. So ideally, you're looking for... You want you want to see uh, attack up, special attack up, or speed up, basically, because if you see those, well, then you know, they're not going to be the negative category. Uh, Eevee, the speed matters a bit more, I think, than Pikachu. Wait. Pika, you can take minus speed a, uh, a bit more as well, but uh, you also get the characteristics, which actually matter in this game, because they uh, determine how uh, AVs are assigned. Uh, yep. It, the technical name, unfortunately, is Go Power. No, the technical but... name is AVs. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but yes, basically, the little one-off stat boosts you get when, at every level up, the characteristic helps determine which, which stat they go into. Yeah, we um, recently, as in like I think last year, maybe two years ago now, figured out kind of what all of those characteristics mean and how AVs are determined. It's funny because the second that you catch your Pokemon, um, your AV spread is predetermined. Uh, so every 10 levels, your AV spread repeats. Uh, so what people are going to be looking for, at least some runners, um, from levels 5 to 15, you can kind of track your AVs, and that way you'll know your stats for the rest of the EV, EV or Pikachu section. Um, oh, I see Randall's checking, and his is calm, not good. We're going to restart that, and go to our backup. Yeah, that is minus attacks plus the def. So, uh, Randall, I think, quite wisely saying, let's 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 just take the backup EV. Uh, you are allowed to prepare a, a backup EV Pikachu of uh, a neutral nature. Uh it has to be the backup of the game you've designated to run. You can't say I'm running Eevee and then see you get a minus attack Eevee and think, oh, yeah. uh, my backup's a Pikachu, by the way. You have to have the backup prepared in the in your game of choice. That's correct, yeah. We'll see if Randall... I think I saw Randall was preparing this the other day, so I wonder if he named his Eevee just like he did last time. But we'll have to wait a little bit to find out until it gets into battle. Yeah, you don't get the instant... Uh, rival fight as you do in the uh, original Gen 1 games or in the Gen 3 uh, remakes, repolishes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you get the chance to walk up to Route 1, get the parcel and come back down and then face the rival. Ostensibly, I think, because uh, you get Pokeballs nice and early in this as well, so you could actually catch some Pokemon in the meantime. Yeah, and, and um, in this first fight, your rival's starter is actually level 6. So it's kind of supposed to be like intended that you do catch Pokemon in that time because you're level five and the game's like you should be leveling up and catching Pokemon even now, like right now. Do it now, please. It, catch all the Pokemon. It's been for it's kind of forcing very early on the idea that you know this isn't your traditional you you get the bulk of your experience through battling. You no know, catching is is how you get that experience in this, which works out nicely because we need to catch a lot of Pokemon for the run otherwise. Uh, you're going to have a bad time about two and a half hours in. What are you talking about, Benji? This is a Pokemon game. You just take one Pokemon and you run it all the way to the end, right? Why do we need to catch so many Pokemon in this game? I mean, that is true, because we all know the cycle of how you play Pokemon. As a kid, you pick your favorite and you just only use that all the way through. And then you get a bit older and you, you work about, okay, I want to have good synergy. I want to have good coverage, you know, make a balanced team. And then you become a speedrunner and you go back to maining one Pokemon again. So true. The cycle just repeats. Uh, so, we're going to so see true. the first rival fights now. And this is when we can maybe get some information about on the EV set, I believe. Uh, yeah, we can see maybe if it's plus or minus attack um, in particular, or maybe defense, though I'm not quite as well versed. But that's pretty good attack. I don't think that's plus attack necessarily, but it's good for head bob. Yeah, it feels positive. I was going to say it must be a good attack IV. The IVs are all good. The starters, That's correct, uh, yeah. it's locked to uh, 31 in every in every IV. So nature is the only thing that determines, and then AVs beyond that. Yeah, nature and then AV spread. But at level five, we're not going to know our AV spread because that's just the level we start at. Uh, and 
Uh, <laughs> something else in my head and it's disappeared. Sorry, it's been a been a long day. It hasn't even no, been it's long definitely day, been a long day. There's already been one whole race today, one that was super exciting. Um, that was the race that told us today is optional day. Uh, hopefully none of our players run into any on this race, but we'll find out. And that's one of the things that we talked about briefly at the start, is that uh, it's a race, so even if you hit optionals, you, you kind of, you just, you just, you, you plow through regardless. You don't do the, oh, well, new run, off you go. You gotta, you gotta tough out in there. Uh, also, Randall's back up, Evie's also a girl. Fantastic. Uh, normally, uh, starters have uh, an uneven gender ratio. It's about seven, it's seven to one, the, the likelihood of getting uh, usually a female starter, but it's 50 50 for the partner, e Pikachu and Eevee. It's a good change, in my opinion. I, I know I know that they, they do that, so there's less like ability for you to breed them, but it always bothers me as a, a, a she-her just not being able to have a female starter all the time. And even in Gen 2, it meant your starter was worse, which was not cool. Yeah, this is why you pick... Uh, who's the special... Oh, I guess Typhlosion would be the special attacker in Gen 2, right? So it mattered a bit less. So. Yeah. Also, 16 attack for Amber. That seems... Help me out, chat. Uh, let me check... Let me check the notes. I should have uh, the notes. I think that's uh, about... I don't think that's attack up, I think that's just neutral. Okay, so neutral yeah, attack. chat says naive. So maybe naive, maybe normal. So, well, Etiquette said the attack was normal. I believe him. Yeah, naive is uh, plus speed minus spadef. It's the opposite of sassy. And that is perfectly fine. It's nice to make sure that you're getting... That you're getting uh, the opportunity to outspeed as many things as possible because that slows you down. Uh, Amber going for an early Weedle. Not always a bad strategy. Uh, that basically, uh, before you enter forest, there's some sort of like newbie mode in instituted on all the catches. So every time, as long as you throw it and it hits the Pokemon, it's going to get in the ball. That goes away as soon as you enter forest. Um, but it means that you get an early bug, which either means that you've got just a little bit of early experience, or you can do 2C on these catches in the forest. It's a little bit more more likely to get in that way. Yeah, some Pokemon games, they, they, they added a feature where on Route 1, your catches are guaranteed. It's not quite that in this, but they've, as you mentioned, that little the sneaky hidden boost uh, if you catch anything before you get into the forest. The little sneaky hidden boost. Things they don't tell you about in the manual. Yes, biscuit. What is it? Uh, I'm, 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 now. I'm currently overrun with cats. <laughs> well, you have to tell us what biscuit wants. Does does who's biscuit cheering for? Uh, is uh, it Randall or Amber or Head Bob? Uh, I asked the runners before the race who was going to win, and they said Head Bob. And unfortunately, ah. biscuit's a bit of a bandwagoner. So oh, the Head Bob wins. Okay. Head Bob wins apparently. Yep. Uh. I was going to say, oh, glowing peak at, for Am for Am, but that's one of the catches that you often that if you're playing Eevee, you can catch before you uh, before you get the lure. But of course, Amber's not playing Eevee, and they've also they've already got a Pikachu, so it's a, yeah. a really unappealing catch. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, sometimes you can like uh, in Eevee. I'd love to see an early glowing Pika because um, Eevee has a harder time with this Pidgey that Amber is just about to fight. Oh, and Headbob is about to fight as well. Um, you'll see that Amber's gonna KO this Pidgey in one shot, but Eevee needs two turns. Uh, and that can be not great if Pidgey decides to go for a move that isn't Tackle. I won't say it just in case Randall uh, has trouble, but actually, never mind. It looks like Ran Randall's gonna catch a Pika, and maybe he'll do the 2C strat I'm talking about on this last. That'd be pretty cool. And because Randall also picked up a, an early Weedle, he's got the opportunity to go for the 2 controller for the Pika to just... Uh, boost that catch count as well, to boost the catch likelihood as well. Randall in the chat like... saying no. Well, fine, Randall. Just t everything I say is going to be wrong. Let's make it happen. And it looks like Frick. Amber turned around and was able to find a, a Bulbasaur as oh, well Frick. as a nice bonus catch. Well, that's slick. Let's freaking go. Someone get me, someone make a Bulbasaur pogging emote so we can get let's freaking go. That's just at a gasp, isn't it? Yeah, sort of. I'll, I'll give you that one. Yeah, it looks like a pog to me. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're with it. Uh, you need to catch a grass Pokemon uh, in Forest, no matter which version you have, because you need a grass or a water Pokemon to get into Brock's gym, and there uh, conveniently are not any water Pokemon yet. So essentially, it is, you've got to catch uh, 
Bulbasaur and either Oddish or Bellsprout, depending on which version you're running. Look at that row of Weedle on Amber's screen. That's just improbable. Not even uh, on a Weedle catch chain. Uh, no, they're just there. There's a mechanic in this game where uh, after your after you catch a Pokemon, uh, you, that technically starts a catch chain, and even if you just catch one, uh, when you're on a catch chain, it makes that Pokemon more likely to spawn. And yeah, so, it can be bad when you're trying to find a different Pokemon on a route to get catches, so you have to be kind of careful about what you go for when you're getting in there. Though, the good news is that Amber just found a glowing Caterpie, um, so that'll help her right out. Holy crap, that was a big Caterpie. That's a Wombo. Uh, Pokemon in this, they'll sometimes, they'll kind of, they'll glow, that have like a, these little sparkles orbiting them. Uh, that means a Pokemon is either uh, tiny or huge. Uh, and that gives you uh, an experience multiplier when you catch it. And certain, and what it doesn't tell you is that some of those are enormous or absolutely teeny weeny. I think is the I like teeny weeny. Absolutely teeny weeny. Yep. Just a little guy, gender neutral. So uh, <laughs> just a little gender neutral guy. I love it. Uh, and that gives you a further experience bonus, so you can actually find yourself gaining extra levels when perhaps you A, wanted to because it makes things can evolve quicker, or B, you didn't want to because you just hadn't got around to taking them out of your party yet, and you've yeah. got to sit there while while Butterfree learns three moves. Yeah, though, um, going back to what Benji said about grass types, so it looks like Randall and Head Bob both caught their bell sprouts while we were talking about whatever we wanted on commentary and it looks like new amber has yet to find their grass type um one thing that is a little bit different between the versions is that uh, eevee is actually going to fight brock with the eevee uh but pikachu is doesn't have a good time against ground types so they're so, going to be looking for an oddish oh yes Kahuna, so go ahead. new amber new amber does have the bulbasaur and there was an oddish there but it looks like new amber chose to neglect it and just continue on with brown there from what i, I know think Pretty common with runners, yeah. Um, what you'll try to do is you'll try to catch uh, a, a level nine Oddish on the up the upper part of Route Two, just below Peter City. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a better time fighting Brock because you have those extra two levels. So I assume that since Amber's already done all their catches, they're going to try and go for that Route Two Oddish, uh, just so they they have a little bit of a better time on Brock. The problem is it's not guaranteed to spawn. So fingers crossed for Amber, everybody, as they go into Route Two Roulette. Yeah, the uh, the risk you have of this is that it doesn't come up, and I wonder if the oddish that was on screen for Amber spawned before the lure came in. Uh, no, what the lure that's does? Round one. Is oh, it and we're guarantees? getting. Go it ahead. does. Sorry, yeah, sorry. We're just getting confirmation that Head Bob is a quiet Eevee, and that yes, Amber is indeed naive. So good to know all of that. One more try for Amber on Route Two. Come on, oddish, where are you? Come on, Oddish, where are you? Kind of, kind of cringe here, Oddish. Let's let's be real. This is what we talked about—the problem with the catch chain as well. There, there it we is. go, and it's glowing for some extra experience. Uh, That's the lore nice to see. Forces uh, every Pokemon that spawns to spawn at one level uh, over what they would normally spawn at at the max. Yeah. So, as well as you know, making guaranteeing that Pokemon are more likely to appear, it also makes them uh, a little bit stronger. So you've got a little less work to do with them. Yes, very good to see. And it looks like Head Bob's the first one into Brock's gym, based on the fact that Randall just called Hatterpie. That's my guess, anyway. Yes, Randall's just leaving the forest, and he's got everything except a Frick. And those are like one percent spawns, so you don't bank on them. And Head Bob is now fighting Brock with no no bonuses, so just the bugs and the Bell Sprout. Uh, but it's still early on in the run, and he's got enough experience, so off we go. Yeah, with this, with the Eevee version of the fight, uh, you'll notice that uh, one of the reasons why you want to catch the glowing things in the forest and why you want to use the lure as well is because uh, that gets more experience for Eevee. And at level 10, Eevee learns Double Kick, which gives them uh, a stab option, uh, not a stab option, a super effective option, I should say, against these rock types. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's Double Kick's a physical move, and if you know anything about Geodude and Onyx, they are uh, they've got good physical bulk so uh, it's not quite as swift for this and this is why you use the Eevee as well rather than the Bell Sprout is that the Bell Sprout's grass move is Vine Whip and that is a physical move and so 
even though it's super effective, uh, the fact that the the, the Onyx and the, the Onyx especially has got a very high uh, physical defense means that the Bell Sprout doesn't necessarily have a good time, as good a time as the Eevee, which is using a, a more powerful move and is, uh, you know, it's got higher stats and perfect perfect IVs and will just have a better time with things. Yeah, and that's why the Pikachu game will always use Oddish, because Oddish has Absorb, which is a special move, which is something that both Geodude and Onyx are not good in handling. So it has a mostly better time. The problem is that um, you can get a really slow Oddish that doesn't outspeed the Onyx, and then you have problems with, you know, Rock Slide, since that can be a really nasty move. But let's hope that Amber's Oddish is Speedy Gonzalez today. That'd be great. Yeah, uh, Rock Slide has a 30% flinch chance, which is why is it's it been... Is high? It's why it's been a menace in VGC for years, because if you've got a fast rock slider, then you can, providing you hit, of course, then Man, no uh, sometimes your opponent never moves. No wonder that thing has a chance to miss. It's too good. Right, especially because it's also dual target. I think it's 30%. I might have to go and double check this now. I, I don't, I would believe it. I honestly just don't know. Uh, yeah, it is 30, which Holy moly. Rude. Well, yeah, that is so rude. Oh, and Head Bob is now done with Brock and going to do the first shop of the run. Um, you get a couple of X, X items for the early parts of the fight. Not, not too many, just a couple to get you all the way to Vermilion City. And then, of course, we get our suite of status healing items, since, of course, things can be very mean and do very bad things to you. X items, the things you never used as a kid, and then you realize as an adult, why on earth did I not use these? They are mm -hmm. crazy busted. Uh, they are more busted in this than they have Even been in any busted, Pokemon yeah. game before. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, because... what was that, Kahuna? No, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, they were even more busted in this game. As they really are. To, to yeah. lead off with. Uh, Gen 7 changed the way X items work, I think, because people never use them. So that rather than uh, boosting your stats one stage, they boost it two stages, which is essentially doubling it. Uh, mm -hmm. Head Bob just got sniped by the rat there as he tried to sneak behind that trainer. Sadly, uh, not a noodle. No, unfortunately, uh, in in Gen 7, it also make up for the fact that they were twice as effective, they crossed twice as much. And then uh, in this, they reverted them back to their original Kanto prices. So you're getting a double boost uh, for the price of what used to be a single boost. And boy, do we exploit that. Oh boy, do we exploit that. It's, it's very, very useful throughout the run. Alright, Headbop picking up another lure as we all make our way over to Mount Moon. Gonna be a fun time in the cave as we're looking for our favorite pink things. Uh, Pat, Benji, what are your favorite pink things? What, Pokemon related will... pink things? Or generally? <laughs> you, uh, you, up to you. Tell you what, I'll, I'll stick to Pokemon. I'm always a fan of chances. Uh, I, uh -huh. For the the rare chances that if a runner sees a chance and gets lucky on the the first throw, uh, if it happens to be super size or teeny weeny, uh, just the amount of experience, it it feels like it can unlock some potential time saves depending on how the starter is. Uh, I know sometimes there's some downside as far as the extra levels especially with the bugs, with the, the level up, the evolutions, and some of the moves that they need to learn. Uh, but really, I think it makes just for a more exciting race uh, as far as just unlocking some potential strategies with the extra levels there. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Um, depending on where you are in you know, your catch chains and everything, you are able to um, deposit a lot of the times before you catch a Chansey. Um, so you can kind of focus your experience to where you need it. Um, so a lot of those extra levels can be mitigated. But if, if you're not expecting it and just kind of spawns on top of you, well, you have to make a choice right then and there. And uh, Chad is always going to tell you to do it. So, you know, have to yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm an agent of chaos, so I like Clefairy. There you go. Uh, my favorite pink thing is Aloma Mola. I did not expect that. Yeah, I I was like, I don't remember a pink Pokemon that isn't Aloma Mola. So that, I, I help. Love Disc? No. Shiny Swampert, sort of. Yeah, I do like a good sh good Swampert. I, I have to put my, put my propaganda out there. Uh, also, I... I didn't mention this when Headpop was going through, but uh, 
you will notice that when you go into Mount Moon, uh, Meowth appears from behind you. That's because he's just having a little nap on top of the entrance. As I always thought that do. was adorable. Yeah. It is. There's there's so many n neat little touches like this. In terms yeah. of uh, art direction and style, uh, I think Let's Go is almost certainly the best looking Pokemon game. Yeah, Headbob got a glowing Geodude even before going into the basement room. That's pretty good. Oh, that Zubat almost spawned on top of Randall, but the cutscene saved him. Thanks, cutscene. You're usually not useful. Um, also, didn't mention, all of our runners picked up the fastest catch in the game, a Magikarp. Um, the game calls it outrageous for costing 500 Poké Dollars, but honestly, I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, because it's been that price since the first Pokémon game, and I think inflation's been kind to Magikarp. Yeah, just thinking as well, that if you could, if at any point in the run you could buy a Pokémon for 500 to add to your catch, how the rope, how the route would change in terms of okay, we'll buy fewer items because we can just buy more catches, or just pick up more selling items. Like you, at that point, you're just like, I just want all these Pokemon, give them to me. And that was one of the interesting differences between this and AOP that it was kind of like a no dumb moment once I realized it. Um, with AOP or all obtainable Pokemon looking to get a Gyarados, we don't want a low level magic art, so yeah. we actually don't buy it in that category, which was. Kind of again a no dumb moment once it dawned on me why we don't yeah um you'll find that's another one of the reasons that we lure is because we want pokemon to be as close to the level they evolve as possible so we don't have to waste time with every level up um because in battle it takes a little bit longer and even if it's just like after a catch it's still like two to three seconds per level up and that's not including moves uh you know someone could drop that the pace uh, copy pasta, you know, every every catch, you know, they, they say it's 30 seconds, but little things like how many times you level up, how many moves you learn an evolution and level up, all those sorts of things influence how, how fast or slow a catch actually is. Speaking of pink things, I see something There's our first one. Hello, Two bonjour. Chances. Como va? Bonjour. Doing and of course, some oh, there's management. another one on Amber's screen. Let's go. It's so good. So, of course, chat's already saying do it. I'm not surprised. Head Bob going for it. Let's go, Head Bob. Head Bob wins. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not great odds on this catch, but with double Great Ball and Raz, I think. I think it's slightly better than a coin flip. I think it's in the 70s. It's the best odds, whatever it is. There we go. I mean, Dynam, help me out. What is it? it it's 50-50. Either it, either it gets in or it doesn't, right? So true, and Headbob got the 50, right? And yes, you're right, chat. First to cast chance, he does win, so Headbob wins. GG. Congrats, Headbob. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next race. Oh, there you go. Se nearly 75%. So Yeah, I thought it was like uh, up there. So it's it's good. It's not great, but it's good. I think Clefable is closer to like 68%. It's more likely than hitting a thunder. Which? Why'd you have to say it like that? Because I subjected myself to pain of Pokemon Stadium. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, I know. This so thing. here's a question. Knowing that Headbob catches the Chansey, do you think that influences New Amber's decision? Do I go for this or not? Well, first of all, does Amber even know? I wonder if they're listening. Uh, in which case, uh, they'll need, they're about to cave to peer pressure. Let's go. Yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a closed race like you might see in on some other games, some other formats where stream sniping is is strictly forbidden. Uh, as you will have no doubt have noticed, the runners do appear in chat, and you know you're allowed to watch because it's not like say playing a randomizer where you get a good layout of the seed. Uh, the game's roughly the same every time, so you don't necessarily get the boost from it, but it might tell you that I need to be playing more aggressive or... Uh, or a little safer, one of the two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, oh, let's go Amber. That's a big and That was a big chancy. Um, thinking about right. whether or not you go for this, I think the answer is that you do in Mount Moon. Um, yeah. Because look at that. Amber's already got Ivysaur. Uh, and they've hit the threshold with it, that they need for Misty. They're level f over level 15. They're 16 and almost 17. Um, so that's going to be great. Misty will be a nice, easy, uh, an easier time for Amber. So I think in Mountain Moon, Chansey is almost always a good thing. You just got to deposit your bugs first. And yes, you're right, Pat. I did see that Randall found a Clefairy, which is the pink thing you're normally looking for in Mount Moon. All right, so we've evolved from an uh, optional race this morning, hopefully to just catch all the pink things for our second race today. I'm into and it. And Headbob. 
Head pop chasing as well. Okay. <laughs> it's got a wonderfully onomatic onomatopoeic name in languages that are not English. No, but technically, actually, here's a question. It, since most Pokemon do say, say their name, and I remember watching the anime Clefairy does say its name, does that mean its name is an onomatopoeia? Hmm. Good point. Maybe? I'll have to do some, I'll have to do some soul searching. Me too, to be Not honest. Sure. Let us know in the comments. Uh, it looks like Randall and Amber are pretty much neck and neck, fighting the Sancho at the exact same time, so pretty close so far. Amber with one additional catch, though. Oh, interesting. I thought that, for some reason, I thought that Pikachu usually um, fought the Sancho trainer before they went downstairs. But I guess Amber was just like, no, nah, I don't care. Look, let's just go catch things. Oh, maybe they haven't gone downstairs yet, because there's yeah. Paris. No, they definitely did, because that's where the, the Clefairy oh, was. I think they right. can fight them before, before, or, before or after. Uh, Paris, by the way, I, uh, a really underrated Pokemon IMO. You get, you get Spore. Like how, how can you argue with that? We won't use it. It's not, it's not actually that good. But I don't know. I just, it doesn't get enough, doesn't get enough of a spotlight. Oh, everyone's got their their like preferred favorite Pokemon's, right? Uh, I know that I it's not like great, but I'm a big Houndoom fan, regardless mm. of whether or not it's good. I'm just like, look at this thing. It's a jackal pup. What's it's, not to love? It is, it is like look design. at this Pokemon. If someone's if you said to someone, draw me a cool Pokemon, they'd be like, oh, it's Houndoom. There you go. Yeah, exactly. That that yeah. to me is just like the epitome of cool, and I'm a big fan of like things that look kind of goth. So you know, it fits my sense. aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad it's coming across. Yeah. Uh, Klefki is one of those that gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of stick. I I like Klefki. I think it's funny. I it, partly because it winds people up a lot. I think there are very yeah. few Pokemon designs that I look at and think I don't I don't get it. Most of them I have, I at least get it. I have one Pokemon that I just don't like because of how it's played out in game for me. Um, it's not to do with anything about how it looks, um, but those who know know. I'm trying to think now, and I can't remember. Hmm. Chat, chat saying they're a strong Rockruff fan, also good. Oh, Belly Bolt, very friend-shaped. Very, very, good. These very are friend Very shaped. good Pokemon opinions in chat at the moment. That could change in a dime, but for now, it's good. I think I think generally Gen 9 had a lot of banger Pokemon designs, to be honest. I tend to agree. Uh, I There's also, I know that they're like overpowered and stuff, and people like them in general, but I'm like, look at some of these designs, they're so neat. Like, I think Squawkabilly is really cool. I'm a big fan of um, the Small of line. Smallim um, is so funny. Yeah, it's so cute. I um, love, I love Clawf. It's just so. It's not Clawf good, is great. But, I, but I kept it all the way till the end anyway, just because it made me laugh. I like, I know people don't like it as much, but I'm also a big fan of the Quaxley line. I just think I, that there's something I to like be said. My ducks. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for like this fabulous duck evolving into a gay dancer, and that's just that's just goals. I think. Also because it taught me the word the word quack reversal, which was not a word that I knew before. No, it's good. Also, happy Pride Month, everybody. True, it is June. The oh official month of the gays. Don't oh worry, the rainbow the, the rainbows will be month, gone. Please. Which don't we all love uh, I don't uh, there's a there's a technical term for it, I can't remember. But when all the brands who do nothing all year just put a rainbow on things and be look we're such allies. Uh, We've got sidetracked from the actual run. Uh, are you taking the dome or the helix fossil here? Uh, I think it. Well, technically, I think the one on the left is faster. Um, but I also respect anyone who takes dome just to rile chat up. I really respect that. Well, I'm a fan of uh, playing homage to our one true lord and savior, Lord Helix. I was can't there for that too. Can't believe it's over ten years old now. I was gonna say I'm so old. Yeah, it, it, it really flies. I like taking Dome, partly because when I was a kid that's what I did, and also because for, for Omanite enjoyers, you can see it in the Safari Zone then. Yeah, yeah, it's a little consolation prize. Ah, uh, the Safari Zone. The one thing that didn't come over to this game. No, no. there's the Go Park instead, it's weird. It's weird. I, I don't like the Go Park. I get why it exists, but they made it so lame. As somebody who finished her Pokedex by transferring a bunch of Pokemon from Pokemon Go. Yep.
Because who has friends? Uh, not me. That's why I spend all the yeah. all my time online watching. I just Pokemon. realized. So a Amber is level seventeen into the nerd fight. In the Jesse James fight, poor Randall's level fourteen. I don't think he's had a good time in Mount Moon. Like if I look. No. This is the advantage of catching that chancy is that yeah that much experience when you're this level really goes a long way let's see headbob's level 18 holy crap he looks like got the most experience in mount moon maybe that chancy was supersized i didn't see i was too busy looking at the other chancy on screen but that's pretty great oh randall last minute found a paris that he was previously missing Unfortunately, didn't find that before the Jesse James fight because that would have made that fight a little bit better. Yeah, Jesse J. All the Jesse James fights are double battles, which you might think, well, it's great because if you're playing true double with a controller each, then you both have something to do. Uh, no, because they're uh, because this is a forced double battle. Uh, actually, controller one does the whole thing. Yeah, always a little bit strange, especially if you're seeing someone play like true co-op. Um, because most of the time the co-op person is like doing this stuff, but then it's like the one who's doing the the main routing is like, okay, hang on, I have to do all the fighting now. It's just very strange. Uh, sorry, Chad is correcting me. Both chances were normal. I guess Headbob just found more glowing things in general. Yeah, and we're out the other side of Mount Moon for, for both of our Eevee runners. Gonna take a little diversion through the grass, see if you can get a snake to spawn, but uh, nothing for Headbob. And... We got a noodle for Randall though. That's pretty nice. Ooh. Yeah, especially because lacking on experience slightly, that really does help bump things up. Yeah, I don't know Randall's AV spread, I haven't been paying too much attention, um, but he's got a neutral starter, so AVs can really matter. Um, if you don't get any AVs in attack or special attack, a lot of things just are ranges, and it's kind of lame. We're gonna, uh, now coming into Mount Moon, uh, you'll see a trainer that you might not have seen before. Uh, this is the, uh, the Marvelous Move Trainer, uh, is their technical name. Oh, Monkey. Monkey. Uh, and they give you these, uh, Pokemon fans like to use the terms broken and busted, uh, quite a lot. But these are, these moves are silly strong, especially for this bot in the game. Chat has named that Tamer jo John move, and I like it. Um, that'll go really nicely with Jean Celadon um, when we get to Celadon City. Oh, that's true. Uh, the uh, the move trainer appears in a few Pokemon uh, centers throughout the game. Uh, for Eevee, you get uh, special moves based on the three uh, original Kanto Eeveelutions, uh, Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon. And so there's a, a fire move, an electric move, and a water move. Uh, Pikachu's marvelous moves. I think they're based on like the various different forms of Pikachu that's been over the years, like that's surfing one, yep. Pikachu and flying Pikachu. So uh, I, I don't think the moves are quite as useful because uh, you're not necessarily getting more too much more type diversity, but they are still again very good strong moves. Absolutely an upgrade over the standard move set, and absolutely broken as you had mentioned. Yeah, they, the game really does. I don't want to say handhold, but it. Uh, the idea. I think it. It wants you to use your starter all the way through the game, even though it massively levels are hard when you get kind of beyond the mid game. Well, unless you're catching literally everything you see, and then it's going to be fine. But who does that when you're trying to go fast? Exactly. Uh, Eevee's going to use the first of those marvelous moves they learned to uh, take good advantage. Uh, it's Buzzy Buzz is the electric type move that comes in very handy just before the water type gym. Yes, and Pikachu's got Zippy Zap, which is just going to absolutely destroy in this gym. Yeah, as you might imagine, Pikachu and electric type going into the water type gym uh, also is going to have a very good time. Not a fair fight at all. You tried, Misty, you tried. It's worth it for the fact that, uh, yeah, you struggle so immensely with, with Brock without without the grass types, so uh, Misty's nice and easy for you. Yeah, as long as you get your experience, Misty's not, not too much of a problem. I remember that, like, at lower levels or uh, 
attacks, I think technically the Starmie is a range for Pika, like a dangerous range, but uh, I don't think that Amber will have a problem with it this time. Starmie is a pretty good Pokemon. It feels a little bit wasted on on uh, on like the second gym leader. We should use one of those. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should probably pitch that past some of the runners. We've got a strats channel, maybe we should use it. Hey, maybe mm. we should use a Starmie. Pikachu, you meanie. Uh, Pikachu, Starmie, you meanie. Uh, Starmie uh, oh uses the God. move Gold, which is also the uh, the TM that Misty gives you. Uh, it's uh, an 80 base power water move that has a 30% chance to burn when you use it and a 70% chance to burn when the opponent uses it. Hang on, time out, time out. Did anybody see what Randall's Eevee was named? Uh, no. No? Nobody noticed? Anyone in chat? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it next time it comes out into battle. Yeah, you might want to. Hmm. And, that sucks, uh, though. Randall's instantly going to heal off, uh, get to a better damage range, and uh, get rid of the burn as well, because uh, the first rival fight that Hepbob's just done, New Amble's just doing, and Ram Randall's just about to do, uh, I believe there is quick attack on, at the very least, the... Uh, the, the starter? Uh, yeah, and maybe the, Pidgey, the, maybe the Pidgey as well, so if you're in range, you want to be getting out of that. For sure, yeah. Yeah, Randall getting a little bit bodied in the early game, but hopefully it starts to... Maybe he gets a little luckier later on. Okay, I've seen it. I was gonna say, I I, I, I bet he called it P. He, he did. He, he did, did call, call it Pikachu. Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that cognitive dissonance, friend. Yeah. It's it's really weird seeing Pikachu, Pikachu, and Eevee. So, you know, here we are. Randall, and Randall did uh, adapt, uh, I think, to help come back as we said a little bit with a, a bad Eevee and just kind of adopting some of the Pikachu strats. So it does pay a, a little bit of advantage to know some of the finer details between each version and to just unlock some flexibility as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last year, one of the things that kind of got brought over from Pikachu to Eevee was using Nido King in the hideout section. If you have like a mediocre Eevee, just use a, a Nido King. Turns out it's a little bit better. Yeah, for the for the Eevee route, uh, in an ideal world, you kind of just use Eevee the entire way through until you pick up the new main uh, a couple of hours in, and then you switch to that. But uh, there's a bit more chopping and changing with uh, with the Pikachu because it doesn't quite have the same type coverage, and uh, it's got uh, well, but actually, both the Pikachu and the Eevee have the same rare trait of only having one type weakness. Uh, it it's really tough for the for the Pikachu to get around that in a way it's not quite for the Eevee. Oh, I missed this, but it looks like uh, Amber at one point got poisoned. I assume that must have been on the Sandshrew trainer. Um, but that's unfortunate. Opting not to heal because healing is slow, going through all of these fights, um, hopefully doesn't get bodied by status lag in any of these fights or anything, is just trying to keep up since Nugget Bridge seems to be a little bit of a tight spot at this point in the race, everyone's roughly on the same trainer at the moment, despite their catch differences. Um, yeah, how's everybody doing today? Everybody good? Uh, I definitely wasn't almost late to, to commentate today, because... Uh, no, I definitely wasn't. I, this, definitely isn't my, this definitely isn't my second race commentary of the day. Wasn't commentating a completely different game a few hours ago. Nope. Ah, so we're all a little bit frantic today. I see, I see. Yeah, a what? At what point do we find the hover boots? I don't understand. Ah, well, that's um, post game, unfortunately. Ah, uh, okay. When when youngster Ronnie from Route One says sorry to talk to you while your world's expanding. Yes. Which is literally what he says, by the way. It's quite funny. But again, there's a nice little wry bits of humour in this game, which I think appeal to maybe uh, to some of the more veteran Pokemon players because generally the game's pitched as uh, like a starter point, I think for. For, for, for players coming over from Pokemon Go. It's why catching makes up such an important part of the game. It's kind of bringing over those same or very similar catch mechanics from Pokemon Go into this. But uh, so while it's a very different, uh, it's a very different feel from a traditional Pokemon game, there's nice little touches of humor. Uh, the green cutscenes uh, in the post game are great. Uh, one of my favorite little bits is if you talk to the guy in the bike shop, 
Uh, he speaks really fast, like he's got instant text, which, lovely little nod there. Uh, we're just kind of now scrolling through Nugget Bridge, not necessarily particularly interesting. Uh, Eevee gets the marvellous moves just in time for basically have something super effective against everything on uh, on the bridge, although ideally you don't want to have to hit them with super effective moves because then you get a text box which is slow. Mm -hmm. The only other thing is that depending on whereabouts you talk to the uh, the guy who's definitely not a rocket grunt from, uh, the, the scene can change and you either get this very nice bridge scene or you get just the standard grass fight depending on whether yeah. you talk to him from the bridge or slightly off the bridge. That's a really interesting to, to hear. If that was a conscious decision to have the bike owner talk in really fast text, it, wasn't that a, a shout out to a previous skip or a previous thing for speedruns that was kind of discovered? Yeah, uh, just uh, the instant text glitch was discovered by accident. That if you talked to the bike shop guy without actually getting the bike shop voucher, it then made all the text appear instantly. And really so, cool uh, weekend and that. And uh, at various points, there were debates about whether or whether or not that did count as a glitch for glitchless categories. It, it, you know what? You know what speedrun communities are like. Like what is and isn't a glitch is 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 just vibes essentially. But it's one of those lovely little cute things that they added into this to appeal to players who were playing through Kanto for the fourth frickin' time. Yeah, so someone at Game Freak has a sense of humor. It's not just this game, too. I remember when I was playing through, I think it was X and Y, um, there's a trainer in that game that, that says after you beat them, their power level, it's over 9,000, or something like that. Uh, so somebody at Nintendo was like, we need to like add some memes in for the internet savvy people. I don't know. Give, give them a bone. And yeah, it's a bit like one of the things that good TV shows and good films have done is that, you know, on the face of it, they're ostensibly for kids, but they keep little bits in it for the adults to, to get from it as well, and you don't realise till you play it a few years later. I do realise that, and I do love that, honestly. Because things that are for kids aren't always going to be just for kids. They're going to appeal to other audiences, like Pokemon. We all know that Pokemon appeals to a broad range of people. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that we're still playing a kid's game nearly 30 years on. Kid's game, quite on quite. Because we refuse to grow up. I, I mean, Thank goodness for that. Very true. It, were it not for watching Pokemon 30, 25, 30 years after it came out, I wouldn't now be living in a hole surrounded by cats. So, you know, it, it has some good things. Someone in chat pointing out that Pokemon feels like a family game. Absolutely. Yeah, um, 100%. Definitely something that, like, if, if kids are your thing, you could definitely play Pokemon with your kids. It's something that they could pick up pretty easily. And for, for Let's Go, you can just give them the second controller, right? Like, for most of the time, you're not doing a speed run. They can just help you out. Yeah, 100%. Uh, what was it? Last year, a couple of years ago, my, my partner and I, we played through it again, doing it, like, true co-op, true double style. And it was... Uh, it was really good fun, even though we know that the game is, you know, it's not the hardest Pokemon game, ever, but it was nice to have a properly cooperative Pokemon experience. Oh my god, there's a hole in the wall! Oh my! That's unexpected. I don't understand why there's a hole in the wall if the rockets use Dig to get in there, but... It happens. Hey. They're remodeling. Yeah, that wall just didn't look good um, when the sun rose, so off it goes. It's, it's fine, Everyone, everyone's allowed to maybe... You can get an extension built there. It's like when Thought Park conveniently had a massive fire, and then they could build all those big roller coasters. Sometimes stuff just happens ah. like that. Mm. Mm. Now let's see if Amber or Randall will show us any squirtles in the top grass. Nah. Not a chance. Squirtle up there is a myth. Uh, you say that, but I know Dynam saw it last year. I rem I watched that clip very recently, actually. What I love is that they're doing their run, but also they take a photo to be like, look, I saw it, it's real. Oh, there he is. Oh, look, a Squirtle. Neat. Uh, by the way, chat, if you see anything interesting, funny happen in a race, take a note of it, timestamp it, and we'll put it into the kind of the, the video collage at the end of each round that was, I must say, uh, very fun before we did the... Uh, the round two draws and went into exclamation point slots. Clip that's it, that's the ticket. Reminder. Hey, that's good, I like that. Sorry, what were you saying, Pat? No, I was gonna say it's a very good reminder. Thanks for that. We can't uh, do it without your help. No, like with all of these races, like obviously 
it's great that the races agree to be restreamed because uh, it can be quite nerve wracking having you know people having people watch and you know even if even though everyone's lovely, it, it can still be daunting and it's you know there's a whole tech crew that makes sure things go up without a hitch and do the work behind the scenes the tournament organisation uh, and uh, obviously there's people like us who who just shoot the breeze over the top of it as well and there's a lot of work that goes on to put in tournaments like this and it's really nice that everyone enjoys it yeah it's definitely nerve-wracking though like i know that some people have said oh man i'm so nervous because you're racing people people are watching you like if you're a newer runner um some of the more experienced let's go people are watching this game like i saw a couple of um, former world record holders in the chat earlier you know it can be kind of daunting to perform in front of these people so it's a huge thing that they're doing right now they're able to run a game and they're able to run it while there's some really really there's some people that are watching that are really good at this game so yeah it's a good thing to be able to do all right it's round nice six about the uh, about the Swiss format is that obviously in the first round when you kind of get one player from each pot that oh, yeah. uh, obviously it can be quite daunting because you're playing against you know some of the you know the sub three club or world record holders or whatever but it's a good way a kind of a barometer to mark yourself against but also after that when you're kind of you're playing against people who have the same finish as you did it means that actually you're kind of you're the, the idea of Swiss is that you're consistently getting close level races throughout and that kind of makes it a more a more fun, enjoyable experience, although a little bit more pressurized. Yeah, uh, though nice it's making for stuff. a really cool viewing experience too, because um, like we can see there's a little bit of a difference in in catch counts and speed at the moment, but we know that's going to tighten up and it's going to get to be a really exciting race towards the end for sure. Yeah, like it doesn't necessarily matter whether everyone's kind of around, say, the three oh five mark or around the the three oh ten mark or whatever. Three oh ten. Three oh ten. Yeah, your ten. If, play, if players are on that kind of that level playing field, like it feels, you do get that little extra intensity with the race. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I meant. Three hours, zero minutes, ten seconds. Thanks, oh, thanks, the three oh oh club. That's not a club yeah. you want to be part of, right? No, that's uh, the timing that they use in Jack X speedruns, I think, right? Oh yeah, Jack X, not to be confused with Jack Ten. Exactly. Sure, I'll, I'll nod. <laughs> you missed that joke, no worries. Um, so Amber is going to be looking in route, on Route 6 for uh, an Arcan... No, not an Arcan, a Growlithe, a pupper. Uh, a big orange thing um, that they can use to help them get to the next couple of fights. Um, Pika is, is a pretty good Pokemon, but has a hard time versus Sandshrews and uh, certain really tough grass types. So it would be really nice to have a puppy. That we all just also like puppies. I'm a big Growlithe fan. I really like Growlithe. There's one. Hey, there what's it up, buddy? Is. Uh, it's no it's especially here. important. Uh, it's one of the version exclusives. You get Growlithe in uh, in Pikachu and Vulpix in Eevee. It's more important in uh, Pikachu because a you can use the Growlithe for fights. B uh, Arcanine's a pretty good ride Pokemon. Although I will point out that uh, actually Arcanine is not version exclusive. Weirdly enough, because you can yeah. get it. By an in-game, not an in-game trade, an in-game like gift from a from a trainer in Vermilion. But yeah, you just have to true. chain and catch six meows. Not a problem. You can do that. It's part of the speed run, right? I mean, uh, in sure. AOP in in Eevee, it's, it is, in yes. AOP it would be for sure. Yeah. I'm just going for a Pidgey here as well. Holy crap, someone in chat was mentioning that Randall's um, game looks a lot more saturated and like looking at that Jigglypuff, yeah. I finally knew what they meant. I was like, holy crap, that Jigglypuff is so sharp. Uh, Randall nails the Vermilion uh, trainer split as well. It, it always looks wrong to me because it's look, like there's two people staring right at you, but apparently they can't see you because they're too busy staring at each other. But then you break their, co their contact and they're like, what was that? Oh, it was nothing. I'm Trainer still staring at my friend. Trainer yeah. vision is weird. These trainers in Kanto need glasses. It very often reminds me for for those in baseball, like you hit a pop fly to like left center field, and like, oh, you got it, you got it. Everyone thinks that the uh, their teammate's gonna get it, and nope, just drops in the middle. Amber was about to go do Vermilion Skip and then realized that Abra spawned with their back to them. Uh, so it's like, well, I gotta go back for that. So we're gonna see Amber, ooh, good Nanab, perfect Nanab, in fact. Just gonna excellent that Abra real quick. Yeah, uh, nailed the throw as well. A beautiful throw. Uh, it's it's tricky uh, to the Abra because 
obviously in a normal game where they attack you, the only move they know at this point is teleport, so if you don't get it in there immediately, it will just teleport away. Uh, for this, the teleportation happens actually before you encounter them. If you track them head on and basically they can see you, then Abra just uh, kind of pieces out of there and disappears, never to be seen again. A whole Amber's at 20 Pokemon already? It that's is absurd. That's absurd for not even on Route 10. This is just before before the boat rival. That's so many Pokemon. That's that's quite heavy early on. I I quite like uh, front loading catches because you kind of you it means that you're not in a position later on where you're kind of you're waiting around for things that you need to spawn and generally the catches at this point in e are easier than they are later in the game, although they might take a little bit longer to get more out of them because it might take multiple levels to evolve something, for example. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. And then there's, the, of course, Route 10, where Run's going to die. Um, there's only four Pokémon that spawn there at a time, and there's up to six things you want to catch, but there's like ten things or more that spawn in that route, so if you get unlucky, you just you just don't get to catch things. So I really like, like you were saying, front-loading Pokemon catches, because um, that means you you can skip a couple things on Route 10 and not feel bad about it going into Rock Tunnel whatsoever. Um, the Amber's got 55 planned right now. That's absurd. Well, it's just like the old saying, a po a Pokemon in the ball is worth two in the tall grass. So being able to get them when the opportunity strikes Gives you a little bit more flexibility, a little more variance later on if the luck tends to run out. Holy crap, Pat, that's such a good saying. Yeah. Why haven't we said that before? Somebody write that down. Uh, I'll get on I'll get on my notepad, hang on. I'll do the chatting thing. Somebody make that a Are new you copy too busy with the, Too busy with the cat on lap still? No, unfortunately the cats have left me. I can't even see uh, any of them now. Which, not like we haven't got enough of them. Jesus. I made mine go take a nap, so... Okay. Not, not that he protested very much, because he loves to nap right about now. He do be a cat. Yep. Cats have great lives, don't they? Oh, Kane is a very, very um, well-off boy now. I, I don't want to call him spoiled, because who cares if you spoil your pet? That's what they're right. there for, IMO. So, yeah. True. Anyway. Uh, Headbob's going back up for round two of a million skip. Nails it like a pro. See? Headbob wins. We all know yeah. this. Uh, I, fi I find going up a little bit easier than going down, because you've Same. got the tiles to kind of align yourself. I know some people, some people just vibes it both ways, and some people actually find going down easier than going up, but... Uh, either way, and then there's some people like etiquette who take it on an angle like they're going through like a radial motion and it scares me every time I don't yeah it's yeah different uh, yeah apparently um, but I when I was more actively running this game I'd always like there's a there's a spot in the, the the dark brown versus the light brown texture that like sticks up a little bit and I'd like line up on it and then I'd go from there but going up I'm just like I'm up we're here it's good uh, Amber going for the one controller boat rival just because they're pretty chunky at this point. So level twenty one Pika for boat rival. That's pretty up there. Yep, they can afford to. Pikachu learns uh, not cut, uh, chop down. HMs aren't uh, you know you don't teach them to your Pokemon in the same way. The Pikachu learns them or Eevee learns them, quote unquote. But uh, you know they, they can't use them in battle. It's just they've made they've made it so you basically don't have to carry a Pokemon just to be your uh, just to be your HM valet. A true quality of HM life. butler. HM employee. Although I'm not sure. HM employee is also good. Um, that's pretty good. But hey, it gave the doof all a spot in our hearts. The true yeah. MVP. That's a really good short. If you haven't seen Bidoof's, is it Bidoof's big stand? It's so good. Yeah, that's a good one. And Headbob, just, I saw him just evolve his Jigglypuff into a Wigglytuff. So that tells me uh, a couple things. If he wants to, he's able to use it as a sacrifice Pokemon on JJ3, and actually also two. Um, but it also means that we're not going to be seeing any sort of Nido King strats in Eevee, at least from Headbob today. 
No, uh, I, they also, I think, already moonstoned their Clefairy as soon as they caught it, so that would tell me that they got two. They got nice double million. moonstone? Oh my gosh. We're too excited with all the chances we forgot to check. For there them. was so much happening in Mount Moon, we just couldn't see everything at once. I thought he might have done, and then I said, uh, actually, did I see him pick up the first one? Uh, I don't know, because this I'm so, I, I thought I'd better not to. What's that phrase? Better to have people think you a fool than to open your mouth and confirm it. Mm -hmm. That also works, yeah. Yeah, which not a great, not a great recipe for a commentator. But never mind. It's okay. Somebody on the, in either here or in chat will catch you if you're wrong. Like, um, True. I didn't, I didn't call it out earlier, but oops, it's not actually rock slide. It's rock throw that Onyx has. On yeah, Brock. thanks, Razor. Yeah, thanks, Razor. And and it has headbutt, and that's how it flinches you. Um, yes. So yeah, thanks, Razor. Sorry, I didn't call it out earlier. We got distracted by all of the stuff that's happening. Uh, there are so, like, the especially with three races on stream at once, things, a lot happens at the same time. So it, it's, it is easy to miss stuff. But uh, headbutt, you actually get as a TM from Brock, even though it's not a rock type move. Go figure. Because this game, the first three TMs are ridiculously good. Uh, headbutt, scold, and uh, Thunderbolt's definitely the third TM we get. Sure. Uh, That's the third gym we beat, right? Yeah, three really... Look at all the puppers! Three really good... Uh, really good moves you can get early on. Sandy rightfully pointing out that if you replace the bob and head bob with butt, you get headbutt, and that's 30% to flinch. So, you know, 30% to win, right? True. So does that mean bob is the other 70%? Oh. Mm. So head bob just wins that we figured out the formula. GG's gang. Head Bob wins. Thanks for tuning in. See you next race. Let's That's the second time we've said that. So there we go. Yeah, once a half hour. Why not? I'm not saying anything bad about Head Bob. I honestly think he's doing great right now. Um, he's on the Radicate Trainer, which is I think ahead of both of our racers, our other racers. Yeah, he's um, uh, he's got he's covered the most ground so far. But obviously, with the way catches work, and there's still so it's a very high variance run. It's not yeah. like you get a stutter early and then it's just it's just fight RNG. There is a fight RNG, but it's so heavily determined by by how the catching ha plays out. Yeah, well, let's see what we get on Route 10. Well, oh, interesting, Headbob going straight for Eradicate. Just wants that big experience. I see now that Headbob also caught that Rattata that ran into him at the yes. beginning of the game. So this is perfect. Um, he, we don't get the first throw advantage here, but um, Raticate experience is really similar to a uh, Graveler that you can catch in Rock Tunnel, and that's often used as an EXP bomb to level things up. So, Headbob, probably not hurting for experience right now, at least going into the cave. Let's just confirm that. Um, so we've got a level almost 23 EV, so that's going to be pretty good going into the cave. And we're literally just a hair shy on Bellsprout evolving. Um, so here's hoping that we get some good spawns on Route 10 to get push that over the edge. Come on. Okay, there's a Nidoran female. There's a Nidoran male. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's good. You just go for those. Mm -hmm. so, so the things that can spawn on this route are uh, both baby Nidorans, both second stage Nidoran. Uh, as we've seen, uh, Raticate and Ratata as well. Uh, Spiro, Firo, and uh, the Crab that has stronger Crab. attack than the, than the legendary dragon goat. Crabby, yeah, and Chansey. Don't forget Chansey. Oh, how can we? I don't Would think you Psyduck ever... can... Sorry, can you forget Chansey, Pat? Is that what you were just saying? No, I was going to... It's a silly question. Would you ever consider going for a second Chansey? I know it doesn't add to the 50, but would the extra levels unlock? Like, just a I super think... duper over level. I think there's appeal. better Pokemon to go for on most of the routes. Um, like, uh, I just said Raticate. You can catch Raticate pretty much anywhere. So if you're hurting for EXP at any time, you can just catch Rat. Um, and I think that in other places in the run, you can find the experience you need. Um, yeah, I think it's it doesn't have the, the highest base catch rate necessarily either. And... Uh, yeah. Uh... Sorry, I thought it disappeared again. Uh, and yet, yeah, the fact that it is, again, you're kind of covering over old ground, and I think you'd have to be 
very short on experience, I think, to, to make that justifiable. Yeah, I think that one of the only Pokemon that you'd want to ever double up on is going to be Eevee if you're really hurting for catches and you really need that Flareon. Like, that's probably the only case... Ooh, Amber's got a couple good spawns. We got a glowing Nidoran male, always good to see, that they're going to catch first since you're on Pika, you need that Nidoran. Uh, and then there's also a Nidoran female. Oh, and Headbob just got a crab that's being a jerk. We love, we hate to see it. Love Krabby though. Krabby's cool. Krabby versus Cloth. Who's your pick? Cloth. Uh, this might be you can you can throw boomer accusations at me. I'm a big I'm a big Krabby fan. I thought it was underrated. It sucked in in the original Gen One because uh, because of the pre physical special split and all water moves yada yada yada. But like it's got over a hundred base attack. Like that thing can hit. I just love how goofy Cloth looks. It's so goofy. It just, like, you imagine both of them doing the crab rave that we all know and love, I'm sure. Uh, and it just looks so much more interesting if Cloth does it than Krabby does, in my humble opinion. Shiny Cloth is also absolutely cracked. I've not seen Shiny Cloth. Oh, it's a beautiful, like, pastel blue. Oh, that Lovely. sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. I think it's a, a good encompass of how Pokemon styles might have changed in more recent years. Not like going more towards the memes and just the lulls, like think of a Lolan Executor and just some of the fun that they're having there. Um, but definitely how Pokemon have kind of evolved over time, just as far as the design of them go. Yeah, you think about like the original basic bird, Pidgey, which is kind of just like a bird, and then you compare it to like Rukadee, and it's got like the much bigger eyes and it's kind of more bulb shaped. Like the definitely, there's been a change in. No, Bonjour. Randall. Randall, no. Randall, yes. Give in. Could we see a race where all three runners? I just don't think it's good here. I I think it's catch rates too low. It's just no, Randall, don't do it. Do you think the decision here is whether or not it's good or whether or not it's good for Content. the memes? Yeah. If Diamond anyone. wants the catch rate. 56.90% for two greats and an excellent throw with a Raz. Don't do it. Etiquette agrees with me. We're the only two people saying don't do it, but please the, don't the, do it. The sensible thing is absolutely to not do it, right? But that's not the content thing. That's not Randall's MO. Randall, don't throw the run. My pickums have you in first. I'm not biased at all. You are more likely to get have it to have it stick than than break out. Anyway, Headbob's got 24 as he enters Rock Tunnel, and that's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. That's a, um, that's a solid amount. Yeah, that's honestly going in with 24. You're pretty comfortable with that. Um, Amber's already at 25. Randall's at 20. Oh, okay, he's not going for it yet. He might still. I think he, I think he was going for it, and the the Nido just just spawned in front of him. Well, he's he's catching it. Amber's catching that beautiful experience bomb that is Raticate. Uh, there's a few catches you want to get in Tunnel. Uh, the main one you want is Rhyhorn, because you can, especially in Eevee, you can use that as a ride Pokemon. I mean, you can use it as a ride Pokemon in Pikachu, right, as well. But the fact that you've already got Growlithe as Amber has, and you can evolve that one, into Arcanine. One quick second, Benji. Was that, was that Raticate supersized? I don't know my experience yields well enough. Well, because the beak is already. Of levels, it was a lot of levels. That that Nido Nidoran went from like twenty four to twenty. It was just glowing. Okay, good. That was a lot of levels though. That Pika leveled up twice. Had to double check. But the way uh, experience works in this is that rather than you it. get a flat a flat boost, experience is a multiplier, and all those good multipliers luck, like size, excellent throw, uh, synchro bonus, they all stack. And so, if you nail everything, they can get. That can be a lot of experience very quickly. Well, Come he's on, nailed Randall. the excellent. Come on, Randall. Let's go! Let's go! All right, not punished. Not punished. Oh my gosh, 27 on the Nidoran into Rock Tunnel, 26 on the Eevee into Rock Tunnel. That's pretty good. That's, uh, what, 28 catches into Tunnel? Okay, that might pay off for Randall. If he gets an early Rhyhorn, he's laughing, basically. Um, Amber's, oh, okay, gonna get that Spearow, and then I assume that's 
Amber's gonna go off because she's <laughs> Amber's gonna hit 29 if not 30 into tunnel. That's what some people leave tunnel at. This is so we have all three runners with a chance to catch. To be clear, yeah, and all of the and runners are actually looking evolution right now. Pretty healthy. Oh my god, that really is synchronized. Jesus, look at that. <laughs> and they got 28 catches, but Head Bob is inside Rock Tunnel. Keep in mind, so he's walked further than Randall. Um, but Randall did just get that chancy, so that's that's exciting. The yeah, it's interesting that in some races you'll see those catch counts really fluctuate up and down, but all three of our runners have got. Uh, so many, a lot of Pokemon in the bank, and that means that you could be a bit more decisive uh, in the late game in terms of okay, I'm not, I'm not going to hang around because I've got those catches earlier. I can just catch the essentials and move on. I'm not going to be forced to go for things like, you know, like the Tentacle or the Wigglywoo or the Booba. You can just be, you can just be flat out and okay, don't have to, don't have to faff about with the, with the ugly ones. Ugly ones? They're ugly Pokemon? In terms of catch the rates. Ah, okay. I was going to say I thought they were all cute. They are all cute. cute. True, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get into Erica's gym. Every Pokemon is cute. Even Garbodor. Holy the glowing gold. <gasps> Headbob found the Rhyhorn. There's a Let's Rhyhorn. Go. That's that's good to see. Headbob feeling okay now, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it sucks. Even if you catch a lot of Pokemon, not having the Rhyhorn, it just really does decrease your movement speed. And as we all know from Gen 6, 7, Rhyhorn is like the fastest Pokemon. Absolutely. Also, I, I think it's Gen 6 where you ride it. Yeah, they, they talk about like Rhyhorn racing. Like yep. someone's... Oh, in Gen 7, your mum was like a champion yep. Rhyhorn racer, I think. Your mum's a champion Rhyhorn racer, yeah. In those games that I definitely remember playing. So I think this means that while Headbop's the furthest he's at, he's also got the lowest experience. Um, so his Eevee's only level 25, he doesn't have a Moonstone to evolve the Nidorino on, so there it goes out of its party. So he's gonna have to get some glowing Pokémon in this tunnel, or he's gonna start, like, struggling in hideout compared to the other players. It might not be, like, much of a struggle, especially if one of them had good AVs shake out, but that's something to consider as we look at where these runners are in the game at the moment. Though I can see now that Randall's on the same fight as Edbub, because, you know. Yeah, I think maybe just uh, the one fight behind, because that was the Slowpoke, and Headbub's now on the on the Kanga, and Randall gets an early Rhyhorn as well. Let's go. How did the racers decide which version they would run? Uh, I think it's... You, you, you just pick which version you prefer, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure Randall flipped a coin. Maybe not a metaphorical coin. Digital coin was flipped for Randall. Oh, did he really? Okay. He really did. But, oh, Eevee, no. Got five oh. hit by Comet Punch. That is a good point. We're not sure how the racers picked which version they ran exactly. Might be good to ask if we remember in two hours from now. But, you know, that's two hours from now, so who remembers anything? The five hit... Comet punch with one of them critting. That is, uh, that's the yikes. That's unfortunately. unfortunate. Goodbye, Zubat. You were loved. Did its job. Was it? I love Zubat. Yeah, but I don't think that Zubat was necessarily particularly loved. That's hence fair. being forced, <laughs> being forced to be sat by the Kangas car. Well, you never know. Now, Head Bob might um, not get Golbat. Let me pull up his tracker, actually. And then Eevee doesn't HP. get the rage on that Kanga either. Mm -hmm. No, he's still got it selected at the moment. Could just catch ta Tower of Golbat, you know? The most useful thing to spawn ever in the entire run. Or, you know, there's one in the cave, but screw that one. Yeah, I think if you see, if one comes up right in front of you, 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 you might catch it. But if it doesn't, uh, you're not necessarily going to turn around back for it. Yeah. Oh, it's a 70% if you get a great and two great balls. That's not likely. No, the bad catches are horrendous. There was a there was a glowing onyx if he wants it. Ooh, glowing graveler though. We like that glowing graveler. Is, uh, that's going to be an EXP bomb, as you said earlier, and not just yes. because it can blow itself up. <laughs> not just because it can blow itself up, yeah. There's a nice attack from the graveler. Bye. Head bob nailing the excellent like a boss.
tower, uh, cave cubone as well for Randall. I like how you were about to call it tower cubone, but yeah, and I was like, that's not. Cave. Yeah. Uh, so it's more likely to. Sp it has a higher spawn rate in Pokemon Tower than it has in Rock Tunnel, but. Uh, But there's just so f it the the general spawn rate in tower is so much lower that you're actually almost more likely to see it here in rock tunnel. Yeah. Both um, both Randall and Headbob are Eevee racers, just teaching double hedge on the same menu here. Um, so that's kind of neat. We're gonna see double edge strats in hideout. So uh, both of our runners ended up getting enough experience that glowing graveler really helping for Headbob there. So you have the this the riskier because you're gonna be a lower health all the time, but. I think generally more consistent fights in Hideout for Eevee, where your Eevee has double edge, everything hits a lot harder, but you do take damage. There's a Kangaskhan that Headbob ran into, he's not going to catch it because he's smart. Uh, it's, it's Especially when you've got Even so I. many catches, you, you, you're not feeling forced into catching that. So I, I totally get why you'd run, even though it is just pure time loss, because you know, whereas if you if you catch the Kanga, then you can say, hey, well, I caught it, so it's actually not that bad, but the catch rate of Kanga's not brilliant. The only thing you do left get to ride for... the Kanga, which is cool. The only thing left for Headbob to catch in Tunnel right now is Cubone, um, or maybe Golbat, since his Zubat's currently dead. Um, so, you know, we can keep an eye out for that one. Um, or Rare Char. Or Rare Char, that'd be good, because he's only got 50 planned at the moment, and that includes coughing and wheezing. Um, so it would be really good, feel a little bit better if you do catch that Cubone. And even the Rare Char, the Rare Char would honestly be kind of nice in this particular situation. Look, another Kanga! What's going another on? Another glowing one as well. The game's trying to tell you. It's telling you, Headbob, turn around and ride the Kanga. I'm just amazed that runners can see what's going on, it's so dark in here. We just know where the run is, and we avoid the rest. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. What else do our runners need? Uh, Randall's looking for a Graveler. Um, I know Amber just found one. Uh, and Amber's looking for just this Graveler. Great. Okay. So, Randall's still hoping for that Graveler. He'll want even more experience and get that one. Um, Head Bob didn't see a Cubone yet, and that's all of our runners are looking for in this tunnel. Amber's gonna leave with, like, 35, if not more. 36. Yeah, they have just got all the Pokemon, it seems. Uh, yeah, it looks like. Um, that's really healthy to leave to leave Rock Tunnel with. Uh, probably feeling pretty good. Still only has, um... No, 55 plants still. Yep. Won't need all those. Uh, no. Headbob having to do some some fancy footwork to avoid the Pokemon and the trainers, who apparently still have exactly the same vision regardless of whether or not you you light up the cave. Yeah, apparently they don't need to see. They they can see really well in the dark. They just can't see very far at all. Randall asking, "What is a Grabbler look like?" Um, I think that's supposed to say, "What does a Grabbler look like?" Um, it's a ball with arms. Like a Geodude. Only bigger. So an Onyx? Yeah, like that. Okay. Oh, it's got feet as well. Yeah, but you won't be able to see those in the dark. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right. It makes everything so much trickier. Why don't they just light the cave? I mean... Uh, time loss. Uh, no, I, me I meant the game. Oh, you mean it would have taken more time to develop, right? I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. With you you would have taken more time. Like, it's like a Polaroid. You gotta shake it, and then you have to wait. There's a Graveler. See, Randall? You'll find one. There we go. It's right there. Oh my god, it's got four arms. It does, but you can only see two of them on the overworld. Mm. Where do the other arms go? When it why, does, why does only the middle stage have those extra arms? Uh, the, the arms join into one. So, like, both right arms join into one really large arm. That's why Golem is so heavy. You are so wise. Thank you. I don't think I've ever noticed the forearms before. Oh, that's a good point. The arms go to Machamp when the Machoke evolves, because you trade them together. Uh, 
Yeah. Ah. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's all. It's all coming Today together. I learned. I just have to wonder now where Haunter's feet, uh, the Gengar feet come from when it evolves from Haunter into Gengar. They don't come from goddamn Mindy. You what now? Mindy, the trainer in uh, Diamond oh. Pearl, who trades you the, mm. the Haunter with the Everstone, <laughs> with the Everstone and then on laughs it. in your face. Rude. Rude person. That's one of the things Gen 9 got right. They trade you a Haunter, and it actually does evolve this time. I do love me a good Gengar, I will say. Like, I, I just love that it's called Hauntikins as well, even though, even after it evolves. What? what? Unlike, unlike goddamn Mindy. You can Mindy. still do Hauntikins. Yeah, it's just glad that they... Like, why would you put an in-game trade for a trade Evo and give it an Everstone? Why? To be mean. They've got a sense of humor, right? But further proof that Diamond and Pearl are not a are not actually good games. Shots fired here on commentary today. Ooh. Platt's Platt's great. Love Platt. But uh, part of the reason why BDSP was underwhelming is because Diamond and Pearl are actually themselves underwhelming. There we Rand are. That's why. Randall's finally that's outside the tunnel, um, and it looks like Headbob's just starting uh, finishing up the rival fight in Tower. Rival 4, I want to say? 3? No, Two? You're, you are 4. I yes. think it's 4. Yeah, 4 slash 5, depending on wh what you cast the optional rival fight as. Oh, I completely missed that Ram Amber didn't find a Rhyhorn. Um, never mind. Yeah, uh... It's gonna want to fight. Don't, gonna want to uh, a Firestone ASAP just to uh, just to evolve the the Growlithe to get the Arcanine to ride on. And thankfully, there's one coming up on the next route. Though, if last round is any indication, that means Amber's gonna win. So, hmm, there you are. Poor Cubone, sadly trudged down the stairs. No oh, Cubone. It's alright, I'm sure a good trainer will catch you and take care of you, and definitely become champion, and definitely not immediately lose after becoming champion. Headbub already won, he caught Chansey first. That's the real quiz. We are coming up to the metronome trainer, but... Any metronome guesses in chat? We're not gonna see it. Uh, Amber's, uh, did manage to catch, uh, not just the, the Nido, but caught, uh, I think it was the Nido run, I'm gonna double check, yeah, it actually caught it at the base form, which means it has Poison Jab when you, uh, after you level up and then evolve it, so that is, uh, that's a straight, uh, one shot on the Clefairy. So is Double Edge from an Eevee. Which both of our runners have. But I will put a Metronome guess in for the fans. Sad. I was close. You were close. Uh, Headbob's got everything they might want from that grass, so they're gonna they're gonna go around. They uh, didn't actually catch the Volpix, but they're not gonna take the risk to go through and pick it up or to yeah. pick up the Firestone because they didn't have the Volpix. Uh, there's also a chance it can spawn when they come out the other side here as well. They can also get a Firestone in Mansion. You can. It's it's pretty free. Amber, however, is going to grab that Firestone right away. Yes, especially with no right hole. So Randall's out, and to... new Amber's going to be out after this cutscene that isn't a cutscene. I was going to say, I know they're not super far apart, but this almost feels like the farthest apart that Head Bob has been ahead of everyone else so far. Like, yes, the catch count is lower, and you've got some making up to do there. So, what are your thoughts? Is still not really too much known? As There's... far as, do, do you think that's a, enough of a lead? It's it's tricky, because on the one hand, you love having the early catches, but on the other hand, there is that almost invisible scoreboard pressure of just being further along the route, and, you know, you, you know, you, 
I guess if you're, especially if you're one of these runners, you back yourself that you're going to make these uh, those catches anyway. Uh, oh, a modest nature. That'd be handy. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's still pretty even to be honest. Okay. I think so. Um, it'll de we'll see better after hideout. Um, it's really hard to know exactly who's ahead until um, Blaine or Koga, but right now it's close enough, I think, given how many more catches Randall has versus how far ahead Headbob is. Um, we're going to have to see how the luck shakes out, though, because as we know, luck is very uh, is a very big factor in Let's Go Runs. Everyone would like to think that it's not, but I think we all know that it, that it does play a factor certainly does. Well, we know it does, because everyone's fought Archer 2. Yeah, that's, uh, I think there are some games where, and actually, like, the end game of this, there are lots of difficult, dangerous fights, but I think Archer 2 is almost unanimously the worst fight in the game. Yeah, I think so. I think Archer, Caden, and Caroline are probably just the big ones that are super annoying. Nobody wants to see. And we're getting the Firestone. And Amber's going to get a legendary Pokemon. Absolutely. The legendary Pokemon, in fact. No other Pokemon has the official uh, classification, I guess, of legendary Pokemon. Not even Bidoof? No, it's very cringe of po very cringe of the Pokemon company, in my opinion. No, that's the Canada Pokemon. Hey, Bidoof! It's the Canada Pokemon. I know I was doing it. Canada. Thing. I'm in Canada, so I, I just completely don't recognize that that's not a question. Fair. Randall is trying to say something in chat, but I don't know what he's trying to say. I, yeah. I genuinely don't know. Great. Speed uh, running the way, and typing. Next level. Next level yeah, attempt there. It's pretty hard. Yeah. You will see uh, when it's especially prevalent when they walk through the uh, when they walk through the tunnels. But uh, the Pikachu and Eevee's tails shake sometimes when, and that's basically the 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 in-game equivalent of the item finder. Yeah. And that it shakes when you're near an item because the the aid that would usually give you the item finder after a certain number of catches or a certain number of Pokemon in your Pokedex instead gives you the judge function which lets you know gives you a kind of a rough range of their of the ivs of your pokemon yeah I think often used cool. after a run to see how good your star is yeah past abra yes i did see an abra spot oh that's what Randall capital bra means it's not bra it's abra mm. Passi Anta translates into past Avra. Oh well. I I'm understand learning. now. There we go. We mm. figured it out. Good job, I'm team. To speak Randall. Very good. Avra. Yep, that's how I see it too. Yeah. What is Randall's favorite type of cheese? I have wondered this. Genuinely, I have wondered this, by the way. Oh, I, I was like, what's the what's the punchline to this joke? <laughs> no, this, <laughs> not, if this isn't a joke. I'm genuinely curious. No, that's a good question. Now that I think about it. Um. Yeah, Randall, when you have a second, if you could tell us. can also ask in the interview. I don't know his favorite cheese, but I do know his favorite Mario Kart racer is either Yoshi or Shy Guy. Ooh, okay. I'm um a big uh, in Mario Kart 8, Dry Bones. Dry Bones, okay. I and usually I rock. Uh, in the last Mario game I played consistently, Mario, Mario, Mario Kart game I played consistently, I rocked with a combo of King Boo and Toadette. I think. Ooh, okay. I played um, Double Dash on the GameCube, uh, and my mm. team my team was always Bowser Jr. or Koopa Kid and Koopa Paratroopa. That was always my go-to mm. team. Nice, yeah, getting those three shells. 
like it. Did like the three shells. Um, I also just liked babies. I thought that, uh, at least in the meta of my household, it was a lot better of a pick just because of the high acceleration. Yeah, very, very aggressive playstyle. I make. I, I, I can see it. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. in various stages of, of hideout fight here at the moment. We don't need to talk about that. We can talk more about our favorite Mario Kart characters and stages. Uh, how does everybody feel about Baby Park? Best. The only true method of playing Mario Kart is Baby Park. Mm. One lap. Bang. Off you go. One lap. <laughs> One lap. It's, it's either that or Wario Coliseum seven laps. There are two dualities. I was a fan of, um, is it Daisy Cruise? Daisy Cruiser, yeah. Yeah, that one's good. Peach Beach. Um... The, I honestly don't even mind Rainbow Road because I was always baby and I found that a way, easy, way easier place to like grip. Peach Beach with the incredibly phallic shaped thing that goes over the beach. Always that wasn't what really that was. what I what I was playing Peach Beach for, but no. Oh. But it just I, was, I can't every time Pete, someone mentions Peach Beach, it's unfortunately it's all I can think of. <laughs> of course, quite, quite Freudian in a way. Well, you know, it's a good thing when we're not really paying attention to what's happening in the run because that we're talking about something completely different. That means nothing yeah. bad is happening so far, and that's good. Definitely nothing that's going to break health and safety regulations. No, we're I'm not American. They don't ex we don't have OSHA. True. We have OHS. This is, this is set in Japan, right? So I'm not sure what kind of laws they have over there, but I imagine maybe they're looking the other way here. I mean, th there is a. This is some sort of mob or mafia underneath a, a, a casino. Uh, clearly, nobody cares. I'm just amazed they managed to find somewhere that's so roomy in Japan. True. Yeah, everyone has houses. Like, you're walking into these houses and stealing things that are just you know, on their shelves. Apparently, like, enough people in Japan are spread out that they just have houses and there's like three of them per town. I want to live in that town. My partner's just uh, recently got, got into watching like tours of micro apartments of Japan and they're pining to move back and I'm like, not not into one of those places. You think we can foster cats if we live in a box? No, yeah, you can't no. do that. But I thought cats love boxes. They love having their own boxes though. Ah, that's the difference, gotcha. Yeah, we have, unfortunately we have too many cats for that sort of box. Not that we otherwise have too many cats. That's not, not a, that's not a thing. Yeah, cats are cats are just good. I can only have the one because of Kane being special, but that's okay. Yeah, he's a special boy. We love him and his in his exclamation mark mustache. <laughs> it's it's very distinguished. It's, it's really cute. It's a good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good look for him. I rate oh him. yeah, I rate him a lot. We're all just talking about how cute my cat is. There'll be a, a animated picture of him, not animated, but like cartoon picture of him at the end. Um, and there was at the beginning. It's by a friend of the PSR community, Yogg KV. Shout outs to Yogg KV. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, now Pikachu's gonna do the very safe thing and clamber in between these grapes. Uh, and both EV runners are on uh, J and J three? Uh, two. Four? Are we doing this game? Uh, 12? Sure. Oh, thanks for actually giving a shout out to Yogg KV mods. You're great. Counting is hard. Uh, okay, so Headbob didn't one-shot the Arbok. That looks okay, because only the Rhyhorn is paralyzed. There goes down the Arbok. Um, the Weezing could be a bit of a butt, but let's see how this goes. Yeah, the, the Arbok has Glare, which is one of the best status moves in the game. Because it, uh, it's 100 accuracy, so unless you've been accuracy dropped, it can't. Uh, it, it, it doesn't miss, and par paralysis can be very debilitating. It's not as bad as it used to be, because it's now only 1 in 3 to be fully powered as opposed to 50-50, and it only yeah. halves your speed rather than quartering your speed, but that still is a lot slower than you want to be. Randall having a similar but slightly worse fight in that, like, they, they, they ended J and J in very similar times, Randall and Headbob, but Randall, um, Eevee is paralyzed and Rhyhorn is poisoned, I believe. Not ideal. So he's gonna have to heal those off, especially because, uh, in battles in this game, especially double battles, if one of your Pokemon has a status, can, 
if any Pokemon actually has a status condition, the game just takes a little bit longer to process it. So if you ever hear someone talking about status lag, that's that's what they mean. Yeah, and it's not every time. It's if you don't select your move within like a couple of seconds or frames. I'm not entirely sure which, um, but like you can select moves fast enough that it won't matter. Uh, but you have to be good at the game and hopefully on the move you were hoping to use already. So a little hard to get there. And because Amber doesn't have a Rhyhorn, we're seeing Pika and Arcanine taking on this fight. Gonna be, I'm assuming the Arcanine's just gonna be here to use X items um, and hopefully take these hits from, oh, okay, well, it died. Goodbye. Go <laughs> just like the zoo bad earlier, goodbye, Arcanine. And the Pika, Pika gets toxic as well. No uh, one likes toxic. No. Well, that's definitely not gonna come up later in the run. Well, now that you've said it, it will. Come on. Yeah, obviously it will. Don't but... weaponize your caster's curse. That's not cool. Uh, it's uh, it's funny to me how the best technique Pokemon recognizes how annoying toxic stalling is, and uh, we will we will very much get there later on in the later on. If you on just in the run. use poison types, it's not a big deal. That is that is very true. Uh, Randall's through the first archer fight. He definitely gets. Uh, Definitely gets better. Yep, hundred percent. Well, um, Randall's neutral, right? Yes, he has to be because he ran the backup EV. The backup, yes. Yep. Okay, I'm glad I remembered that correctly. Yeah. Um, Randall is neutral. Um, this fight can be really dangerous as EV if it's minus defense because this Persian sucks. Um, it has slash and it crits a lot. And if you're minus defense, you're taking a lot more damage from it. Um, none of that is good. Uh, 69 attack, nice. All right. Um, Let's go. Yeah, so the way that you're supposed to do this fight in EV in the regular time is you X attack one turn because you're going to get the fake out. You sizzly slide on the next two turns. And, or, okay, in, in Rhino's case, it's just going to double edge because, oh my god, it one shot. I didn't yep. know that happened. Okay, neat. And uh, just about to watch the recoil. Lost. Thanks, Double Edge, you lived on a low amount of health, but you know what? Calculated. Uh, bouncy bubble now for Rhyhorn. Yeah, Head Bob's showing the other version of the fight, where you use to take advantage of the marvelous moves and their secondary effects. So, Sizzly Side uh, guarantees burn, which uh, cuts the Persian's physical attack in half, which means you can then survive the second hit. And as you mentioned, you Bouncy Bubble the Rhyhorn, and Bouncy Bubble is a draining move, so you get all that health right back because uh, it's quad weak to water, and uh, it goes bye bye. Headbob is also right through that fight. Um, Randall's saying that that was probably a 15 and 26 range. I'm assuming I, he I, means 15 and 16. Um, yes. I, I that's what I hope, that. anyway. I hope you don't go for that other range. Um, I, it's pretty baller if you did, though. It's pretty baller, yeah. Um, all of our racers pretty close. I'd say um, Randall's a little bit ahead of Amber. Um, and head pop. Just a little bit. Yeah, uh, 35 catches in the bank and furthest down the road, uh, you think puts in, not necessarily in the lead, but Randall's maybe edging slightly into a better position now. Uh, because all of our runners are pretty good on catches, they're not necessarily going to go and take the detour to pick up the extra... Oh, actually, as I say that, head pop is going to take the detour and pick up the extra ultra balls, because they're just not quite as... Uh, not quite as stuffed in the Pokédex as the others are. Yeah, 33 catches uh, going into Pokémon Tower the, the, the second time, I guess, uh, is not that great. I was looking at Headbomb's tracker. Because he's not counting on Tower Cubone, he is trying to go for Tentacool. <laughs> not a good catch. He's also looking to be catching a whole lot of stuff. Um, later on, we're talking coughings, we're talking as many things as possible on Pokemon Road. So, the more Ultra Balls, the better. I wouldn't be surprised if Headbob picks up the Ultra Balls in Tower as well. I hope he does. Um, so we're just gonna see a whole lot of stuff. I don't think Magbar was barked yet, chat. So don't get too excited. No. But everyone knows the Japanese name first. The magma, which makes yes. me, makes me happy. It's because it's based on like a on the booby, the bird. You know, you can see that it's got like. The I do and... see that. Why aren't its feet blue though? Not all boobies have to be blue footed, right? But that's so iconic of the booby. I know. I guess because 
And like I was gonna say more about the shiny, but the shiny one's pink. It's not even blue. The shiny is pink. I I have one in Pokemon Go, and I'm just like, this isn't blue. It's not. If I, it's supposed to have a booby, but there's work to be done. I think I caught one in Arceus, maybe. Uh, oh, by what? the way, I think it's instant very funny Rick to... for Randall. Good job, Randall. You, that's the only time I'm gonna call it Rick. It's a ghastly. Uh, yeah, it's funny to me that as soon as you kind of go past this floor, you use the silver scope, and there's ghosts everywhere. And then after the cutscene, there are no ghosts. They just Rick. don't don't appear. I'm just over here making fun of Randall. Don't mind me. Valid. It's it's a bit of a grink moment, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. Another one. Oh, and Head Bob getting a ghastly. Okay, that's good. He needed that. Uh, he did oh, need I that. just just looked and actually Head Bob's at forty nine planned um, because he wasn't able to find the Vulpix. So you know what, Chat? Maybe Tangla. Maybe maybe Magmar. That might actually be something. Maybe Vile Plume. Vile Plume. That'd be pretty funny. I would. I mean, except I, I, let's keep in mind that this is Eevee. Yeah, I hope. You're right. Maybe Victory Bell. I don't know if it can actually spawn there. Uh, I think it can, actually. I have not seen it myself. I've only ever seen Guile Plumes, but I think somebody was running AOP and it, it can. So the chat is saying it can, so let's hope. Also, I feel like the correct pronunciation of Vile Plume has to be said with like a, a deep south drawl. Vile Plume. Vile Plume? Hmm. Sure. Villa Plume? I don't know. That's I feel like that's how Matt would say it. I back you. Uh, yeah. Eevee runners have a good time with this because uh, from the second marvelous move trainer in in Celadon, uh, you get the the Gen Two Evolution uh, special move, so Psychic and Dark uh, for. For the dark type move, the Umbra move, that's the uh, uniquely named Baddie Bad, which I mean, sure, <laughs> knock oh, yourselves man. out, Pokemon. Our Pika, our Pika. Our, it's because the Eevee's named Pikachu. I keep getting messed up. Our Eevee runners have really good experience. They're both like level 31, 32. Oh my god, Headbob brought the, cow the tower Cubone. Let's go. I think that brings him back up to. Well, he's now got 51 planned. He can even cut he, something. He, well, he'll probably just not evolve, like, coughing or Tenta. Like, ideally, honestly, you might still want to catch a Tangela so you don't have to catch Tentacool, because heck that. Yeah, uh, every everything you have to catch in the water, you can't spawn a support trainer, so they're all, they are guaranteed to be uh, single, I, single control I know. catches. I know! A useful suck. tower Cubone? When does this happen? It's a myth. No, it just happened! We saw it! No, there'll be loads of other catches that he could have caught instead, and he won't need to... No, this was... Yeah, this was a very timely spawn. It was real, real good. Now, Amber's gonna be hoping for a Ghastly as well, though isn't <laughs> quite as needed. Randall getting trapped by a Ghastly. Rick's not your friend, Randall. Randall getting trapped in a race? Never. <laughs> not like that time Etika got trapped by a Kangaskhan. It, uh, th there comes a point when you're just like, I'll just take it and, and run. It's slow, but how long am I going to be stuck here otherwise? Head Bob picking up the extra Ultra Balls as well. Good, good. Is that a Tower Chansey? Right no. before the cutscene. Can, can Chansey even spawn in the tower? It can, actually. Yeah, it just did for Head Bob. That's he? That's right unreal. The oh, stream heard him. That that's how you know. Chansey was real. Bonjour. But it's gone now. Uh when you start the cutscenes movies, uh everything on screen despawns. Oh my god, this poor Eevee. Or er, Pikachu. Eevee, right. It's just you know what? Randall did this on purpose and I'm just gonna lean into it. Yeah. PV. PV. EP. Oh, EP is also good, yeah. But that's technically the Pokemon fusion between Eevee and Fanpy. Oh, look, a, a Ghastly for Amber. It happened at the last possible moment. Perfect. Literally can't avoid that. Uh, oh, there's a glowing one. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, good. I was like worried that it was gonna take Amber upstairs and you yeah. spawn the ghastly. Oh no, go that through there, horrible. go through the loud side. Oh, that was almost scary, but we're fun. And somehow doesn't get awarded with at least a great for that catch. Sure game. So the most important thing is that it gets in. And it got in, so that's something. And we're now at 38 and hasn't even set foot on Pokemon Road yet. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're seeing Jesse and James for the second time in about as many minutes. Glitzy Glow, which is the psychic type move that you learn in the in Celadon, uh, just deals with all these poison and the all the I was going to say ghost types uh, because all the ghost types in Gen One are poison types, right? Deals with yeah. the, the with the tower section uh, very well, indeed. Uh, Glitzy Glow uh, is just a strong special move and also sets Light Screen Baddie Bad, which you don't teach in this run. Uh, it's like the uh, just uh, sets up Reflect as well, so they're kind of yeah. The counterparts of each they're, other. They're good moves. They're good moves. Yeah, all the marvelous moves are pretty good. All right, off we go to fight the Relaxo and then get on to Pokemon Road for Randall. Um, normally, this is where um, normally this is where runners that don't get a Rhyhorn would take the most like, time loss from that because you're running down like a straight path for such a long time. Um, but because Amber has Arcanine. It's not going to be so bad. Um, you'll be able to uh, get there in roughly amount, the same amount of time as a Rhyhorn. The only time loss was from when Amber was going from Tower to that Firestone the first time. So not too bad. Wasn't able to use as many strats with the Rhyhorn as you'd like to, but overall in Pika, it's way it's way better to not get Rhyhorn in Pika than it is in Eevee. One of the things that this that the game uh, that, this, that the run takes advantage of quite a lot is that wherever you need to, essentially, you can make a battle a double battle. And unlike when double battles were first introduced in Gen Three, when it's uh, you can use items on the opposite Pokemon even when it's not their turn. So if you watch like a Colosseum speedrun, for example, if you want to X special the Espeon and then attack with it on the same turn, you have to pretends to use an item on the Espeon and then basically trick the game into giving, an, giving it an X special because yes. you can't use the X special on the other one otherwise but uh, that was only ever in, in, gen, in gen 3 and now you can use items on the other Pokemon freely so a lot of the run is attacking with one and using the other Pokemon to, to feed it X items or heal it up it's a it's a really cool strategy, and it makes a lot of the end game fights a lot safer. Um, so, depending on how far ahead or behind our runners get, they might wind up using two C strats in the Elite Four and in some of the later game fights. Um, you use a lot of X items in those fights, and it makes it a lot safer if you have less turns or you're exposed to moves from the from the enemy. This Doe Duo is just jumping all over the place. Able to get it in with a great though. It looked like there was definitely a Rapidash just below it. Maybe a pony. There as sure well. was. There sure was a Rapidash. I didn't see the pony, but I could have missed it. And with as close as this race is going, following up on your point, it is a race, right? It's first, second, and third. So depending on where our runners are in the Elite Four, that might be a decision making as well. Do I go for the safer two C strats, or am I behind? Do I need to risk it with the one C strat? Bang on Absolutely. Path. Yeah, no, it's going to be really interesting to see, because not only that, it's also going to depend on how good these players' um, mains are. Um, with, if, if they've got bad stats, it might be, it might you might have to do the saver strats, otherwise you're just going to have too many ranges on those Pokemon that'll just kill you if you miss them. So, Very hard true. to say. One, one of the things that you sign up for, I guess, with this category, just the RNG of uh, the star that you get later on. True, yeah. All right, there's that Rapidash. No pony yet, but that doesn't say much. What the heck is happening? Holy! Uh, Dodrios? Anyone want Dodrios? Uh, or Eevee? Eevee, maybe? Eevee? Anybody? Uh, catching the Dodrio doesn't make Dodrio more likely to spawn. That's just it sure mm -hmm. sheer dumb luck. That was a glowing Eevee, by the way. That's kind of hilarious. Where are the po There's a duck. There's a pony. Okay, there's a pony and a duck and a glowing bird if Randall needs it. Uh, Randall's got birds, I think. Randall does indeed have burns. I just pulled up the tracker again. I'm just going to leave this for now. Yeah. It's good. Randall catching the duck. Uh, I mean, every every duck bunny is, is a, here. Duck is a bird. Uh, no, it's a fish. What are you talking about? Mm, okay, fair. It's a fish. Every pony fish is duck. here. And Evie is but, here. Evie boy. 
Maybe it's a bird fish? Is that a thing? Yeah, like a flying fish. Oh yeah. Yeah. Also, of all, like, the, I get why they didn't make Psyduck part psychic type, because there's already lots of water psychic types in Gen 1, but it's called Psyduck! Come I, on now. I'm right there with you. It, like, its whole it's... thing was that it has headaches because it can't sustain its own ma massive psychic powers. It should have been a psychic type. Um, they just should have not had Slow Bro be a psychic type. They should have made it something else. Slow Bro is so cool, though. Yeah, but there's too many water psychic types, like you said. I know. Also, I think Ninetales should be, like, maybe not Vulpix, but Ninetales should be a psychic type as well. That's my other thing. I am a big fan of Alolan Vulpix and Ninetales, I will say. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very brave opinion. I know, but it's one that I have. I just really like... The typing of Ice and Fairy is just so nice. I know it's, like, got a lot of weaknesses, but the coverage is just superb. And it's a really, really cute Pokémon. Let's not forget that. Yeah, Snow Warning's a really nice ability. Give it Aurora Veil, and then you put a Frostmoth, Frostmoth next to it, and you get top 500 on ladder. Let's go. Right, right, yeah. I was, I was very proud of the Frostmoth team my partner and I built. Great, yes, I know fun. that you evaporate when you see anything steel, but I don't care. I'll just take some Pokemon that have resistance to steel type moves. Well, I guess now you can terrestrialize, and with the snow boost, you get a 50. If you don't Terry, you get a 50% defense boost anyway. There's some so. crazy. Like, where's that gif of the guy that's doing all the math in his head? That's what I feel like has happening right now. Berry types, steel types. What are you talking about? True. Oh, they're in this game. To be fair. Yeah, there are fairy types. Uh, <laughs> there are steel types. There are no, however, dark types that are native to Kanto. True. Not unless you trade in the the alternatives from like Alolan, uh, Muck, yeah. and Meowth. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and Rat. And Rat. Mm, you're so rat. right. I think that maybe like they overcorrected a little bit there, but it's so... one of the other reasons why why you teach uh, why teaching the psychic move is great because. It's not like you can't hit anything because oh, there no. are no dark types. Head Bob, go for the pony that just spawned. Go! Go! Oh no, he's going for the rapid dash. No! You don't need to! But he is a head Bob. Head Bob, a pony spawned! Hey, but there was a time when the world record had rapid dash but not ponyta. I, well, now he has to catch Tentacool and evolve it, which is a little awkward. But actually, you know what? This might be okay if it gets in. Easy. Yeah, okay, because this fixes the one-off problem he had, so this is fine. I was making a big deal of it, it's actually okay. That, yeah, if you had to pick one Pokémon not to catch, I guess it's the Pony. Because this, this way you save fine. a rare candy. Yeah, it's fine. Notably though, Amber already has 43 caught Pokémon and she's still, uh... She's marked the Doduo. Um... But this yeah, will be 44. This will be 44, yeah. Needs to catch, like, one more thing? One more thing. Go, Amber. I was thinking that the Rhyhorn, like, because you keep the Rhyhorn for a while, I was like, I wonder how much longer you have to keep hold of it for it to evolve uh, a lot longer. It doesn't evolve until level 42. I was going to say, I, I happen to know it evolves in its, like, early 40s. So, uh, yeah, it's a long time. That said, though, when I played when I played Let's Go Casually, I actually did ride my ride on because I thought it was funny. Yeah, I, you, it's like riding the ride on is so much slower than riding the ride horn. Very funny. All right, now we're gonna get our main. Yeah, let's focus on the star. I guess I was gonna ask, is it the funniest ride though? But star is a little more. Important. Oh, it's hard to say. There's a lot of really good rides. All right, um, Randall's got a star. What is it? So what we're looking for is we're looking 1099? at 1099. That's high. Uh, That's we're looking good. at the value in the top right corner below the level, the CP, which is combat power. It's basically there's some algorithm that, or not algorithm, some equation of of how the stats play out. And generally, the higher the the higher the CP, the better the Pokemon is. It doesn't necessarily always play out like that because it could have, for example. You know, really high physical attack and really good defensive defenses, but have trash special attack, which is obviously not good when you're running a Starmie, which is, uh, as you know by this point, going to be uh, going to be the Pokemon we use for the rest of the run. So, funnily enough, Randall having just caught a star, Amber just going to get Sea Skim, and Headbub also getting Sea Skim, 
I think now Headbomb's a little behind. I'm not sure how that happened. So, I think partly because they didn't have as many catches early, they weren't as yeah. tight on it. They weren't as tidy on experience, which made the fights yeah, a little bit slower. Like, when, like we had the Eevee die at least once, maybe twice. The yeah, unfortunate Kanga fight definitely a little oh, bit like there as well. Yeah, the That's Kanga true. Mean. Yeah. Uh, looks like Randall just needs to evolve Ninetales and the rest of his party. Randall's also done with catches. So that's pretty nice. Headbob getting a tentacool. So no no star seeking just yet. Going for the silver Raz. Tentacool, you need to slow down. There it goes. Yep. Because you can't two controller it, so getting the silver Raz and getting the excellent is. Oh, look, crucial. a star ran into Amber. Nice. It's the star. 1091! Oh my gosh, both of those stars so far very, very good. CP. Yeah. And hopefully that translates. Fingers crossed. I would prefer if all of our runners had a good star so we could just see them uh, game out of their Randall, mind in this last hour. Randall's evolving. Not sure if anyone caught the stats for it. I uh, missed 88 it. 97 with a special attack, I think, in speed. So very fast and pretty good special attack. I'd say on medium to high end. Um, so pretty happy with that, I'd say. Very very fast star. Um, probably decent in the special attack as well. I'd say that's it's not bad. Bob's still looking for the, his star. Of course, he gets a tentacruel, which is not. We're not fine so far. We don't. We need. Don't need to worry until we get to the bottom of the route, right? Mm. Oh, okay, please. we're at the bottom of the route. There it is. There, there you go. it is. Go. 1070. 1070, okay. A lot okay, closer to average, but... Yeah. It's between about 970 and 1170, right? I can't remember the exact... Uh, uh it's about 960-something to 1172-ish, something like that. I don't know. So this is, right, uh, average new is 1062. Amber, new Amber's evolving? Uh, 82, so okay, special attack. I missed the speed. 94 speed. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so this star is slightly worse than Randall's, but still solid. This is why we pay the the whopping 10 grand to Madam Celadon to guarantee the nature, because it means you're getting plus special attack and minus attack. Modest is the best nature for it. I wonder how much the run would change if you couldn't guarantee the nature. But yeah, basically, because you can't use synchronize to guarantee the nature of of uh of the pokemon because abilities don't exist in this uh you you can pay madam celadon a uh slightly unreasonable fee to guarantee the nature of all pokemon you catch that day also one of the reasons why you set the clock uh, at the start of the run a so you can get the chance of the double moonstone in mount moon but b because it means the clock's not going to roll over after you set the nature and thus the star is going to be completely random Yep. Head Bob's star, um, very similar to Amber's. Um, fine special attack, pretty speedy. Uh, so nothing terrible about our player's stars. Maybe some maybe some higher end ranges later in the run, but pretty solid overall. Glad to see no one got fooled with a, a bad star with as close of a race as it is. Definitely could have been a, a deal breaker, I think. Yeah. Um, Randall definitely got the best of the stars. And then like Headbob and Amber, I think it goes back and forth, depending on what you're looking at. Um, but overall, these are all very fine stars. Uh, we didn't see anything in the 70s, so we'll take it, right? Would you rate them five out of five stars? Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. At least threes. At least three stars. Sounds good. Saw a ditto for a second. That's pretty fun. That's another pink thing. Uh... Apparently it's purple, as people tell me. But yeah, I, th I, 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 I like to think it's pink. I think, I think it, it depends on the saturation, maybe. Apparently, yeah. It was definitely purple on Randall's. <laughs> 
And now it's quiz time. Uh, Blaine, which is always the third Jim, Jim you do, of course. No notes. Uh, they don't quite have the same full gauntlet of m quizzes up and down, up and down. Instead, you just have the questions at the front, and the questions are pretty easy to get right. But uh, it does happen. Who is the Spitfire Pokemon? Uh, uh, Starmie. Okay. Uh, how many badges are there in Kanto? Twelve. Okay. Uh, what, uh, T true or false, TM28 contains Toon Stomy? What's that? Oh, okay. Um, I forget. Number four. Oh, right. A Steel-type move to use in a Fire-type Pokemon is? Uh, is it physical or special? No. Okay. Uh, and who are you about to fight? Uh, some dude. Gotcha. Okay, well, yeah, that was close. Not uh, close enough, I think, to, to get this run as fast as possible, but it was pretty close. Uh, yeah, I do find it funny that they changed the name of the joke TM from Tombstoner to Tombstoney. Just, just mm. in case. Just in case. Just in case. Uh, yeah, uh, you can actually answer what's that instead of false for the, for the question yes, about can. the TM. And uh, for the last question, you can pick any single response. They're all correct. But why would you not just pick the first one? Because it's right there. So you can mash. Uh, optimally, I think it's one, two, 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 one. Amber trying to use the lift key. Very useful in rock in um in this tower of, of which the name Pokemon Mansion. I forget the name Pokemon Mansion. Where they definitely didn't do loads of shady experiments. Absolutely none. I don't know why there are still so many scientists knocking around when there's clearly nothing going on there anymore. Pretty solid run for Randall, though. I think this might be a sub to Blaine. Uh, I think that's. I think that's a pretty good shout. They've all got good speed, so they don't have to worry about the Rapidash outspeeding. Okay, so the poll says that Ditto actually is purple, and I'm inclined to believe them. So, let's go. Blue? There is the shiny. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some people... I mean, I actually have a shiny Ditto that is totally real and definitely, like, not fake. That I got when I was trading on Christmas... Wonder training on Christmas Day. It's definitely real. I totally... definitely got... Uh, one of those as well. Oh, did you? Yeah, I think that I, uh, I think I <laughs> might have just nip, nabbed the master, the master ball leftovers, whatever hell I it had, and then sent it back into the wild. Does it also have 31 IVs? It's, uh, no. Mine yeah, does. It's, it, 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 one of them is not 31, I can't remember which one, but someone knew what they were doing, I guess. Oh yeah, when you have the Either zeroed attack. out IV, yeah. yeah, for speed probably. Yeah, speed or attack. I, although I think I actually have a genuine, not shiny, zero speed or zero attack ditto. That's which, pretty good. Which, is, as a quick yeah. aside, tapping back into the VGC things, Pokemon Company have made it easier to get legitimate dittos for competitive breeding, so good on ya. Thanks, Game Freak. Yeah, I wish breeding didn't suck as much as it does in Scarlet and Violet, though. I, I mean, hear That's you not there. how eggs are formed. They don't just magically appear at picnics. Yeah, and it doesn't just randomly take 10 minutes for no reason also. Mm. Yeah, that's what I thought, chat. I thought that Randall was on, like, really good pace, possibly sub-3. Like, we'll see, no. but this seems good. He is a member of the sub-3 club. Some... As is New Amber, too. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I guess I should remind myself that Randall used a backup. Yeah, so that's so pretty cool. The run is not, unfortunately, if they were to quote-unquote PB, uh, the run's not valid on... Uh, speedrun.com, but... Race PB. Mm -hmm. The fact that he PB'd having... The fact that it would be such a good time having lost the 45 seconds or whatever it is to reset. That all said, though, there's still lots that could go wrong, so he's on really good pace, and let's hope it stays that way. And let's hope that maybe Amber can have a really good run themselves. And Head Bob. Let's not forget Head Bob. Head Bob's got a win still. Yeah, uh, sure. I thought Randall was naive originally rather than calm but no it was calm i remember uh, i think it was amber that was naive oh amber yeah was naive correct okay i'll take it back all good again three runners hard to keep track of things yeah true i don't even remember what head bob got 
I mean, Rachel's EB was named Pikachu, so that's all the confusion you need. Yeah. Trey. Oh, throwing? Good idea. That's what Randall says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, there's a sign that says don't throw games, throw balls instead. Yes, that's also true. Don't throw the game, throw Pokeballs instead. Uh, so, having attained Chop Down over an hour ago, uh, we're finally putting it into use. Uh, they added a nice little fence around this peninsula, so you can't use Surf slash Sea Skim to get around. You actually do have to go on the boat, get cut, and then chop down the tree. You can't trade over a Pokemon with cut because HMs don't exist like that. You have to go and rub that old man's back. What's chop down? It's called Cutty Cut. Oh yes, true. So there's Flishy Flash, Cutty Cut, Pushy Push, Surfy uh, Surf and Balloon Fight. Lodi Fall? That's what I said, Balloon Fight. Yeah. Balloon Fight. Floaty Fall is, by all accounts, a pretty cracked move as well, but yeah. it's just not necessarily massively useful in the run. I think it's literally Fly. I could be wrong, though. And that's when you get three balloons, and when you're hit three times, then you fall back down, right? By red shells? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the one. Uh, it's better, it's slightly better fly, so it's 95 accuracy, 90 base power, and has a 30% chance to flinch. Wow, you have seven badges? No, we don't. Good guess, though. Mm. I mean, you can make, it makes sense why you might think that, but, but no. So, new Amber joining the chat, so will be interesting to, to see as we enter the final hour here what they decide on doing here. Possibly push for first, or maybe play it safe for second. So really good to, to see again a close race. And again, everyone's going to decide based on where they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's funny because Randall is in chat saying back push, um, more fun. I honestly think that you could. I think Amber is close enough where, where they could push and try to keep up. Um, they're yeah, at 48 catches right now, and Randall's only at uh 46 um did not evolve um vulpix i forgot the name of the pokemon for a second on the menu where you where the notes quote unquote tell you to um which was right after surge but also randall's on a really good run and is just trying to push for the best time possible to so be like i'll find a different menu to do it on it's fine um and fair right um he would know so just going through erica which means we have to talk so we don't yeah. get DMCA'd. Um, so, There's a yeah. Little, there oh, is a little okay. incentive to push because the way the points are decided for the Swiss rounds are first place gets three points, third place gets zero points, uh, and second place, the number of points you get is determined by your time. If you are faster than the median time for that round, you get two points, and if you're slower than the median time for that round, you only get one point. So there is that incentive, even if you are in a solid second, to keep kind of pushing that time as quickly as you can so you can get under that medium time. You would expect that for three kind of runners who won their first races with very good times, that their times would probably fall under that median time threshold. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you, ne you never know. Because so of I have course a there are other top runners as well. Go what ahead. happens if you are the median time? Do you also get Ooh. two points or do you only get one point? Uh, one and a half. Oh, but, but Sandy, how many points do you have, Sandy? Because you were the median time last round. Two, I think. They get all of them, it looks like. Per Randall? We'll see. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think that was talking about something time. else. Mm. You get two. Okay. okay, thank you, Sheep. I appreciate that. Okay, so if you're median, you also get two points. Uh, uh, but I, So the pace that they're going, unless we have some absolutely stonking finishes from here on out, they would pretty comfortably have that uh, under the median time. That said, I hope we get some stonking finishes because that would be really good. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, brother. Gender neutral. Yes. It's Vila Plume. Vila Plume. Down you go. Uh, Starmie's great. Water, spe water psychics are really good typing. Uh, when you get the with Thunderbolt, the TM that you get that Starmie can learn from Surge, uh, you can hit quote unquote everything in the game for at least neutral. It's not quite there is uh, one Pokemon that stands in our way from giving us perfect coverage. 
What Pokemon is that? Uh, it's a clicky tool, but that won't matter. Oh no! Why won't it matter? Because... Uh, oh no, Blue does have an executor. That, I was going to say because it's Grass Dragon, as we all know. It's it's not Grass Dragon yet, unfortunately. Blue doesn't. Blue hasn't found that trainer in the uh, in the E4 and traded an executor for an Alolan version. Amber's still debating whether or not they're going to push for the push for first or try to play it safe. Um, I'm still in the camp that. They should try to push. I push think for content. That, I think that well, one, it's good content. Two, I think they can. Like yes. if they're if they play hard enough, I think they actually can pick it up and really go for it and give Randall a run for his money. Um, only one catch ahead now, but still close <laughs> enough. I think that it's very possible, especially if Randall tries to play anything safe, or even if Randall like, has a bad archer. Really, at this point, mm. I'd say let Archer decide and then see how what your playstyle should look like based on where you are in the Archer. Because at this point, one turn could probably push one of the, one of the runners ahead or behind. And Archer can be, you can get a nice easy three turn or you can be there seven turns later in the fight. Will not finish. It's not a fun time uh, if you get more than like six turns. Six turns you can like, you're like, oh well I made it despite your directions. But you, you know, you're at least through the fight. <laughs> <laughs> and even after Archer, there is Koga to add some variance too. So even after Archer too, there still might be a chance here for the gap to narrow. Yeah, Not even so much of... Koga, but but Kaden, the then, um, Fury's best friend. Koga the, Junior. You've got the you've got the V Road fights. You've got the E4 and Champ. Uh, there are plenty of places to lose time even after the catches have been completed. Oh yeah, some of the most um, harrowing fights left in the game, I'd say. Um, when you're doing PD attempts, there's so many things that you can die to. Even you can even die to the champ if you're if you're unlucky. So yeah, there are certain speed runs where definitely the the really dangerous fights are kind of there in the middle, maybe two thirds, three quarters of the way through. But once you push through those, the end game actually isn't so bad. This is not necessarily one of those where because there are so few fights, and generally when they are when they are all backloaded. It means that those are the dangerous fights because those are the ones you're doing. Uh, the executor that you uh, cannot hit neutrally doesn't matter because you have either a, a, a uh, ideally a Dodrio in the second slot, but you could also use Rapidash or Magma or something, and you can hit that super effectively and get it out of the way. Yeah, Dodrio is the safest option because one X attack and it goes away, 100% hit chance. So awesome there. Uh, Rapidash is technically faster because you don't have to have the Dodrio in your party and you already have Rapidash in slot two. So much faster to use Rapidash, but Fire Blast is the move you need to use and it's only 85% accurate, I think. It might be 80. I don't it, remember. It's, I'm pretty sure it's 85. I hope so. Point being, and there is a gamble involved. So y y sometimes you don't want to go for it, sometimes you do. Uh, I didn't see what Amber is doing. I think they're going for it. Uh, yep, yes. going for it. Nice. I believe. I believe in you. I respect it. I absolutely respect it. Amber's got to try and catch up. Got to full, go full YOLO. Easy nice. game. Just hit it. Coliseum run, hit. runners in shambles. That is the best speed speedrun strat I've been called. Is just don't mess. Good luck, Randall. Uh, I believe that you can beat Archer. Of Archer 2, the bad fight of the game. The first time we saw him, it wasn't so bad, but now this is a true double. We don't get to control that Cubone on the screen, and it's a Cubone at level 36. It shouldn't be. Yeah, he should have. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, good. Randall getting the Thunderbolt start. This is okay, but he does didn't have to heal. Parried. Yeah, didn't get parried, so that's nice. And Cubone actually doing damage on the Electrode. So overall, this is okay. Um, as long as Randall heals and the, the Electra blows up, this is totally fine. In my n somewhat learned opinion, uh, the worst fight in any Pokemon speedrun is the true double battle. Because you're not just relying on opposition RNG, also your partner who you can't control. Who knows what the, what the heck they're going to do. Yeah, I remember watching, uh, I think it was Etiquette running BDSP. That, tr that true double was awful. Also, way to go Cubone, KO'd the Raticate. That's amazing. A useful Cubone fight? For Randall? He's doing great. This, this, this is, is like the fast four turn. Awesome, right? Yeah, the fast yeah. four turn. As long as the thing doesn't happen, which I won't say for cursing reasons. Uh, Amber's now doing their archer. 
Good luck, Amber, I believe. And Head Bob will very shortly be in, on their heels. So ideally you want to see turn one uh, explosion electrode or self-destruct like muck no protect. So yeah, so Amber got it. Yeah, the second best option. I personally think this is fine. Um, yes. I, this mm -hmm. fight, it's pretty easy to know what's going to happen because you're going to KO the muck here because you have to. This muck is very dangerous. The Weezing could do one of two things, but neither of them are super dangerous. Um, Raticate will come in and start sucker punching. You may have to heal at some point, but the fight shouldn't be too, too hard to get through. No, Cubone ideally wanted to use focus energy on that first turn. Not necessarily for the added crit rate, but because it means it can't focus energy on later turns when you actually want it to, to, do, to attack for crying out loud. Yeah, uh, but which it would be preferred. Um, that one, Cubone did Bone Maring on the Weezing, which is interesting. It's not very helpful, but you know what? You're trying, buddy. You're trying. It's interesting that it can use Bone Maring on the Weezing because uh, in order to kind of simplify this for, for runners kind of making the step up from runners, for players making the step up from Pokemon Go, uh, Pokemon don't have abilities in this. Yeah, so my brain is... still won't let me use ground type moves on Weezing. It doesn't matter no. what game it is. Uh, it's, it's, it's neutralizing gas, which is where you can hit it. And it's so effective that it neutralizes every ability in the game, regardless of whether or not Weezing's there. So yeah. Headbob also starting their Archer 2 fight as well. I think Good luck, this is... Headbob. And Cubone picks up the picks up the rat, so that was pretty pretty oh, good for Amber as well. Cubone being a bro today. Cubone. Uh, Ooh, the monk got... goes down, so self destruct. Oh, well, sorry, thunderbolt, no protect. That's fine, but Headbob will have to heal just like Randall did. Ideally, you want Cubone to probably boomerang to take out the electrode in this point, but or it will probably boom. Is my guess. Yes, that's also possible. I lied. Apparently, it just really no. okay. But the... thankfully, Cubone being a bro, Cubone being a bro today. Really, really saving these archer fights from being too, too cringe. Thank you, Cubone. Uh, For once. This, this is one of the rare spots in the run where you have two trainer battles back to back, where even if you play true co-op, uh, second player can't do anything because the first is you've only got, you can only ever have one Pokemon out because it's a true double. And the second, Jesse and James, you don't, the second player doesn't get to be involved even though there's two Pokemon out. Rude. All right, well, we're almost there for Head Bob getting through Archer 2. As long as Weezing doesn't... Okay, perfect. No crits on the Sucker Punch, Weezing didn't protect. We're basically through this fight. Either Head Bob can heal and try to um, tank one hit from the Raticate, or we can... Yeah, he's going to heal. Okay. Um, rather than go for it, he's just going to heal there to make it nice and safe. Yeah, um, I did get the... The, the boomerang that he wanted. That's why you want to see focus energy early because. Aww, thanks, Cubone, for being a bro for three fights in the same race. What's yeah. happening? It was all right. Ideally, you wouldn't have that late focus energy because they'd have used it early. But you know what? Actually, they were doing damage on those early turns anyway. So you know what? Fine. It all worked out okay in the end. What's happening in this race? Why is Archer? Why is Cubone actually doing things? See, it's I, thought, not I thought it was optional day. I thought it was optional day. No, it's opposite day. Apparently. I think catching can chances might have a direct correlation to Cubone. Mm. Who knows? That's we'll the need secret. to do some research. You catch you catch a chancy and then Trace's Cubone actually has good AI. That's the secret. No matter what the game, the true double is always bad. Shout out to Steven Stone and his special aggro. Why? L listen. Randall picking up the Master Ball. You do have to get that in this game. Mm hmm. Now Randall's just leaving to go and get two of the last catches in the game, nice and fast yep. in the form of a Lapras and a Porygon. Um, my Discord is covering my Pokemon tracker, but I think he just has to evolve the the, the Vulpix, right? Correct. That's the yeah. last one he's got marked. Uh, 
Uh, Head Bob is going to wait for the coughing to evolve and then going to pick up the two freebies. And for Amber, don't even have to wait for the evolutions. It's just the two freebies for them. Yeah, Amber just gets to go. So, uh, right, oh, yeah, and on the track, I decided to change everybody's counts. Don't look at those. Um, but Randall, ever so slightly ahead, I think. Um, that doesn't mean much because we're about to go and, well, after Sabrina, we're going to go and then fight Caden. And Caden does his own thing. And Sabrina's even, like, you can even you lose a little bit of time on, on Sabrina as well. You can. I think it's a little bit more rare than having a bad Caden fight, though. Though I could be wrong. I actually don't have enough data points to track this. I Would feel this from the anything very can happen, I feel. Yeah, from True. the very heavy Anik data, it's Sabrina's definitely uh, less annoying than Caden. Yes, for sure. Uh, Coco's gym in general just kind of annoying. But we'll get into that after Sabrina. Mm -hmm. Free um, digital duck. Uh, we love a digital duck. Uh, it is not a fish, though. No, it's it's whatever it is. Pokemon don't like you to remember how nice it is. Yes, Randall doing the final shop in the game. We might get in some insights into what they're what he's thinking for his end game strategies. So we're going to pick up a Hyper Potion, um, some Max Repels to help us get through Victory Road. Then we're going to pick up Expedefs. So Randall is thinking about one seeing some part of Elite Four. Um, he's getting X Speeds, which you just kind of need for a couple of fights. And of course, S X Special Attacks. Notably, no X... Oh, they're okay. Never mind. I lied. He's going to get one X Defense. So he can one see Geo, and he can also one see the entirety of the Elite Four. That doesn't mean he will necessarily. If he winds up being comfortably ahead of Amber by the time he gets there, he might decide that it's better to finish the race than getting like a PB time, because technically it wouldn't be valid as a PB. Um, so he, he might just go for 2C strats. That said, though, Randall not known for going for 2C strats. He did last round, but he didn't know how to do them, so he did them wrong. Uh, so so I would actually expect Randall to just go 1C all the way. His star is good enough, he can probably manage it. Yeah, it's, I was going to say, they're, they're considered safer, but they're only safer if you know what you're doing, which I, is my kind of uh, Chris Farron, who wants to be a millionaire. It's only easy if you know the answers thing. Yeah, if you know the answers to the quiz, the quiz is easy, right? Exactly. So, uh, all right, Amber doing the same amount of shopping. Let's have a look there. Oh, it's slightly different menuing, but that won't, that'll just change the order of items. So, because uh, I didn't see Amber buy Hyper Potions, unless I just missed it. Uh, I might have just missed it. Uh, have the X attacks. Getting two X defenses. Interesting. Not getting X pedefs. I think they bought those already. I didn't see Expedefs. Did someone in chat? Can someone in chat confirm? I I think I saw Expedef. Two of them, right? Oh no! Oh Expedefs. Oh okay. My yes. my bad. Um. No regular. No, they bought two regulars as well. Oh, they did I two think, regs. Okay. I think they okay. bought both. So they have the option for uh everything. Yeah. Uh, just just like Randall. Yeah, with the with the free turns to set up. Uh, the, the multiple items, there's, you know, absolutely you stock up on them, especially because they are they are times two rather than just the times 1.5. Uh, what we want to see on uh, Sabrina is, well, in an ideal world, you wouldn't see light screen at all, but you will, so you want to see it turn uh, as early as possible, I basically, turn so one. you don't have to stall it out. And there you go, turn two light screen. So that mm -hmm. means you've just got to wait an extra turn to stall that out. Ooh. Oh, Stormy! Special gets defense the, fell. Gets the drop. He had to stall out light screen anyway, it's fine. Another Ooh, another drop. one! It's good. Uh, he X speeded, right? I'm pretty sure. You've got to stall then, out the extra turn, so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just saying that he's at minus two speed off right now, which would be dangerous, but he outspeeds, so it's not a big deal. No priority moves on Sabrina, right? Thankfully, no. Alright, so currently, Randall and Amber are uh, one fight apart, as uh, Randall's about to finish this Sabrina fight, but Amber's about to start Sabrina. So, race could still go anyway. 
Uh, bo both of these runners uh, did shopping for 1C strats, so w we'll have to see what happens. If they both go full bore, one of them one of them dies, both of them die, headbub wins, right? So... Mm -hmm. uh, turn one light screen for Amber, so that's going to save a little bit of time over... Uh, over Randall, okay. Let's see what headbub's buying. Buying the Expedefs. Okay, so all of our runners are at least giving themselves the option to go for 1C strats. Their stars are all good enough where they wouldn't have to worry too too much, I don't think. So, this is fine. Headbob, interestingly... There you go. Buying the X defense. Okay, doing the same menu that, that Headbob did and throwing me off a little bit. Yeah, Randall does not have the, uh, the Nine Randall... Tails marked on his tracker, so he knows that he hasn't got it yet. Randall is currently at 48 on the tracker. Um, I think he just forgot to mark Porygon or something. Mm, yeah, he has not marked the Porygon. Okay, so once he evolves, and I thought he might be evolving the Vulpix on this menu when I saw that he didn't do it on the Surge menu. Um, Randall, realize, where's, where are the things you need, Randall? Where's the box? Organize where your bag. Those, where did those four quick candy come from? Um, sometimes you get them when you catch Pokemon. So you can end the run with random candies because you caught like a supersized or a, or a glowing Pokemon. They'll sometimes give you candy or berries. So that's probably how. Uh, the way the candies work is you can get candy for a particular Pokemon, which boosts every stat by one. Or you can uh, get candies for individual stats and they will boost uh, that stat by one at the start and then the more you buff it the more candies you need to be able to continue to boost it i think there's been some recent discussion about those candies trying to to use that to help give potential break points for stars that are kind of mediocre just to help get them over their edge yes it is a little bit of a time loss to transfer into candy uh, especially since it is one at a time you can't give them you know shove multiple candies down their throat I know, yeah, I know that's been a, a recent discussion as far as, okay, is this another way that we can look to improve? Or, you know, is this applicable for race strats? Well, I know um, if Etiquette or Headstone are in the chat, they can correct me. But I think that candies actually used to be in the in the routing of the runs, like, way back in the day, uh, I think. Um, they're not in there now because there's a lot of dialogue that Professor Oak does when you first transfer Pokemon. So, you know, it's slow, and if you can do it faster, do it faster. Um, I, but I, people were talking about them for safety strats. Sorry, go ahead. I think you could definitely see them in uh, in maybe the longer categories, where yeah. losing a little bit of time when there's more variance isn't so bad. Mm, and mm -hmm, uh, also mm -hmm. where you're more likely to collect candy because you're catching more Pokemon. That makes perfect sense, yeah, for longer ones, for, for longer speedrun categories, that a couple extra seconds. Not not as much of an impact versus a, a shorter one. Not that you three hours is short, dump but... To the... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I can't straight across you. Okay, guys, this is a Canadian standoff. One of you has to talk. No, uh, I, I see that we are now into the, the next gym here. Caden so time, everybody. I, I think that's where the focus needs to go. Uh, actually, really quick, did anybody see if Amber got early teeth? Because I think I saw Randall get early teeth. I did not see. So we'll have to keep that in mind, that we, it looks like they're very close, but Amber may have not gotten early teeth, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Kaden uh, uses the old ninja strategy that they'll obviously learned from Koga, which it turns out is just toxic stalling, both the move and the manner of play. Randall but... right through that muck like it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, okay, Amber getting poisoned. I think Amber should, yeah, just go. Just worry about the toxic afterwards and just kill this muck. This muck sucks. I won't yeah. say anything until head mobs through the muck, but Amber got early teeth, great. Then this is nice and close. The muck moveset is, is an odd one. It's got the classic ninja strategy of toxic, protect, and uh, minimize, because everyone loves that. Uh, and it's also got Moonblast as a fourth move, weirdly hmm. enough. We're seeing some of the, the status lag that you had mentioned earlier, unfortunately. Oh my god, it was Koga all along. Uh, no. And by the way, the fact that they're in Koga's means that they did manage to reach 50 Pokemon. Good job, everyone. We did it. Good job. 
Um, had Bob just reorganizing before entering Koga's gym himself? Still marked at 49, is that true? Uh, I assume they just haven't marked the Porygon. That is correct, I just double-checked the tracker. Okay. Yeah, if Amber just manips Explosion, that'll make this fight nice and fast. Uh, question in chat about as to, like, what the strats are for Endgame. They- everyone has bought everything they need to 1C. Uh, we think that everyone is just gonna go through it because it's so close right now. If one person slips, the other person's winning. So, who knows. The question is, who's gonna 1C Samuel? Weaving went for the turn 1 Protect. Which is nice because you're setting up on that turn anyway. And, as you might imagine, Psychic type in Poison type gym, uh, it's it's a good matchup for you. Yeah, thankfully. All right, now Headbob is going into the real boss of Koga's gym, and that's Caden. Randall's saying pain, but it looks like he's through the fight okay. I wonder if he ran out of psychics. Yeah, this is very his close. Share protects in, in the fight there, I think, for Randall. Yeah, probably. So just a couple of turns. Yeah, a couple of protects for, for Amber as well. Mm -hmm. I am not kidding when I say I want to know who's one seeing Samuel, because that's going to change so many things. One see Colby? Don't even joke about that. That's just a game loss. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. No, Colby is the bad one in Victory Road. That if you accidentally don't talk to Carolyn right, you might talk to Colby, and he's got the oh. electrode, and you lose the game. Yeah, I, that's that's bad. The, and the 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 hitboxes for what counts as talking to Colby and not Caroline. They don't they don't make sense because like Etchy one time tried to talk to Caroline and accidentally talked to Colby, and no one's sure how. Yeah, it's it's wild. Uh, so talk Amber. to Caroline from the top or right. Uh, Amber, by the way, definitely did pick up. Early T? Yes, someone in so, chat did confirm that for me, thank you. It is just a straight shoot. Okay. Well, in terms of, like, it, it's just a straight shootout at this point between Randall and Amber. They've both completed the same number of fights. Uh, movement is pretty. Pretty similar. Uh, pretty except Randall forgot here. Repel. Uh, so if, if Amber doesn't forget Repel, that might be a second or two that, that they can claw back. It is, it is just going to be about how uh, how brave are you going to be for these fights and how do those fights actually play out because it could just be one turn here or there and all of a sudden the lead flips. Absolutely. That's why I'm like, it, 2C or 1C Samuel makes so much difference right now. Hydro Pump, oh, it's 80% accurate, um, but it saves you about nine seconds. But if you miss it, you might just straight up lose. Oh, and, uh, and not so scientific count, I think it's roughly 36 or 37 seconds between the two. Um, I think there was a, a slight delay in its far start, so I'm not sure if that's being factored into account. That's well, pretty close. Like, that's close enough close that this stage of this game. if Randall 2 sees and Amber 1 sees, then we're talking like a photo finish, probably. Mm -hmm. Not that I think Am uh, Randall will 2 see. I actually think he's going to 1 see almost everything. And head bob's not far behind either. Mm -mm. No, this Definitely. again. The second that um, one of these trainers goes for a hydro pump that misses, there's Ra there's head bob. Head bob all in. Uh, Randall is flying back to Viridian rather than rather than running, which I thought was slightly slower. Uh, technically, I think it's either the same or faster. Oh, I always thought it was faster to just run there. I remember asking this question and being told it didn't really matter. Mm. Ah, he's combining the repel menu, that makes sheep, sense. Sheep says running is faster. Yeah, I guess that's true. He forgot to repel. So that makes sense in that situation. So Amber's probably just going to run. Who knows? Maybe it's a second game. Every second might count. I guess if you fly, there's no risk of accidentally getting an encounter. 
I also do want to take a second and say that I appreciate that both Randall and Amber are like trying to help each other out right now in the chat as like they're trying to debate like what YOLO strats do I go for? Uh, Randall saying don't skip the X defend because it's bad. All right, now is Randall going to 1C or 2C Samuel? 1C, let's go! Headbob must not win, Randall says. Well, let's make it so, or try to. Headbob gets fast rival. Uh, if you trigger this little dialogue a little bit too low, then uh, your rival walks down it's a little bit pump. before speaking. Mm -hmm. Is Amber going to do the same? Surely. Amber's also going for it. Good luck, Amber. This is so tense. Mm hmm. No! Oh, lived? Come on, redemption. We have to go for it now. Yes, let's go! Easy. Nice comeback there. You were saying, Dynam? Dynam in chat saying if Amber's star is this tanky, it probably still lives in Megahorn. It does, but boy, was that scary. That is unfortunate, though, because Amber loses time to having to heal there. Um, rather than just getting through like Randall did. So, unfortunate, didn't quite make up time with that. But, there's still a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong. Yeah, even if you miss the pump, uh, Megahorn's not 100% accurate anyway, so it That's can true. just miss. Yeah, so Amber did not die to that pump, or sorry, that Megahorn. Uh, so, was able to not lose a whole lot of time, which is good. Um, and is now going through Geo. Randall is one seeing Geo, going to X defend and try to get through the fight. Um, not taking any chances, well, taking a little bit of a chance because we're not bringing out Rapidash here, but um, we are not taking chances by just not X defending. I know Amber was debating skipping the X defend, but uh, that seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, if Dugtrio crit on that last turn, uh, Randall would be in a very precarious position, but it didn't, so he's all good. Yeah, this is... Uh, well, quick attack range. I don't think anything Geo has has quick attack anymore. Let's see what Amber decides to do. We're X defending. I think that's smart. It technically would yeah. save you some time, but it's too risky, I it's, think. It's, with all these decisions, it's about that risk-reward payoff. Yeah. Like, there comes a point where, yes, you can gain a sec, you know, how much time are you gaining compared to how much you're going to lose. Especially with Headbop right on the heels, too. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Amber's star is incredibly tanky, like, holy moly. Did Headbop also? Yeah, he pumped Samuel, too, and no problem there, mm -hmm. so that's good. All right. Everybody in this race is in the same place. They're only a couple fights behind. They're they're doing their darndest to keep up and try to get as much ground as they can on each other. It's it's yeah. so so tense, very very nerve wracking. This is such a good race. I mean, like you looked at it on paper, and obviously, like it had all the makings of a potential like barnstormer. But you never know until the race actually plays out. But holy moly, this is a great race. Absolutely. Thinking about, it, they all have three points from round one as well, so they do have a little bit of a buffer just as far as just the whole Swiss format and the points that we have this year. Um, so good to certainly start off with a good lead, and you know, does that also influence some of the decision making as well here, knowing that they have those three points secured from the first round? I think it's definitely making some some decisions. Like I know that Pat, you put up a bounty for Ditch Bill. Nobody's Ditch Bill yet because they all want to make a good time. They want they <laughs> want to try and get those points, right? Um, I fully fully expect Ditch Bill bounty to come into effect round three when uh, there's something less on like the line, that. For yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, but like all of our runners here are like, hey, I could catch up, right? Like Randall knows it's mm -hmm. like Amber's on my heels, even Headbomb's on my heels. I have to mm -hmm. go hard. Amber's like. 
I could win this. I have to go hard. And Headbomb's like, if I go hard, I might win. Yeah, if um, one of them one of them gets a bad fight, they have to take a reset yeah. somewhere. But um, I think I think everyone yeah. knows like if you two see right now, you're basically giving up, right? Like because mm -hmm. you're going to lose too much time. This race is too close. Like Amber is right about to start the fight that Randall just killed the first Pokemon on. This is so close. Yeah, um, but if I, I think you might see a thing where because Randall's setting the pace at the moment. If Randall decided that they wanted to TC at some point, then maybe Amber might think, well, they're doing it, so I'm not losing any time compared to them. But mm -hmm. uh, I, is Randall going to 2C things? Uh, I do not see it. If I'm Amber with this tanky star and I see Randall going for 2C anything, unless it's Naomi, I think that Amber is just going to go, nope, I'm risking it and just 1C. Yeah. I think that's the play for Amber right now. Um, because at this point, even if I, even if any of our runners uh, take a death, they're probably still going to beat the median time this coming round, is my guess, yeah. right? All these runners are so good that I would bet that they'll probably still beat the median time, so they're probably not losing a ton um, if they take a risk and it goes south. So if one of the players decides to play it safe for any point, I think that the other runners are just like, F it, we're going. There's going to be a really good time getting no points from this race. Absolutely, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of heartbreaking, but also it's gonna really make round three interesting. That's Swiss, baby. So I heard about that earlier, and I, I wanted to ask because maybe I was mistaken. So it's zero points for third place, really. Unfortunately, it's not three, two, one. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning here. Thank you. Yeah. You. So it's three for first, uh, and a second either gets one or two, depending on whether or not they're below or abo uh, above the median time. Uh, and if you if you get third, you straight up get zero points. So that's that's how it makes it different. So that's why like Headbob's currently in third. He's like, I gotta try and play for second, uh, mm -hmm. right? So gotta get those points. Yeah. So the what and then obviously you get rematched after every round. So if you win your first race and then come last in your second race, you're gonna have the same number of points as someone who finished last in their first race, but then came. Came, sec came first in their second race, or someone who finished second in both their races, but was maybe either side of the median time, right? So, yeah. And I will uh, point out, it is the median of all times, not just second places. Uh, it is where everyone finishes. Um, mm. So if you if you place third, uh, but you still have a really good time, you're going to be affecting other people. So you, you, you can have that last little bit of, I, yeah, I, the... I, I made the median go up, see? Um, yeah, there's that extra incentive because it's even though you're not getting points, you can be slightly uh, taking points away from someone, and mm -hmm. it's the median, it's the median, uh, the median time of each round. Yeah, so though, it's not not over the course of a tournament. Yeah. Um, also, someone's saying that there, there's a possibility that Headbob's actually on PB pace. Wild. Maybe. Uh, who knows? That would be cool. Especially considering a, a minus speed as the starter, which isn't ideal if I chose to run it. Yeah, I think um, I think it worked out just because of the early Chansey. Um, that coupled with you know just trying to keep experience high throughout made it not too bad for Head Bob. Though I though Head Bob did have some rough fights in Hideout where that's really going to come into play. Um, had a couple of took a death I think at one point. Um, mm -hmm. Still still coming out okay. Now, I see that Randall is- oh my god, Amber is going for 1C Naomi. Good luck, Amber. This might be her. Oh my goodness. Because Randall 2 c this is what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. Amber saw the one place where they could save some time. Come on, Amber. This is I nails. believe in you. Crunch, no Got defense crunch. drop. Mm-hmm. Hit the, hit the pump, pump, hit the range, let's go. Make this race closer, let's go. Love to see it. Easy game. <laughs> this is so good. Oh, tense race, everybody. This is so good. I believe if anyone could try and catch up right now, it's it's Amber, I think. Like, Randall, Randall maybe also could, but he's ahead, so it's not relevant at the moment. Um, <laughs> or, oh, maybe, maybe T-Pet? Maybe etchy. Hard, hard is, to say. But like, these are the only people. 
you love the Swiss format because you're not waiting until, you know, semis, finals or whatever to get these sort of matchups. They're Come happening on, early in the tournament and they'll be happening consistently throughout the tournament as well. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. I think this is also a great factor of the, the three-way race format that I know the PSR community is used to from like the Heart Gold Soul Silver or uh, Fire Red Leaf Green's been doing it for years and it means that there's not just the pressure of okay I'm behind but I'm also behind mm -hmm. and in front and it kind of yeah again it's it's extra factor in that risk reward because it means when you get a race like this where all three races are so close that you constantly are taking the gambles off is it worth to push for first if it means yeah. losing second place and sometimes uh yeah Amber's deciding mm -hmm. that it, that it that it is and uh, the race is <laughs> spicier for it it's great yeah now um so Amber got put to sleep by the juggler. Uh, maybe maybe just a little bit of trouble there, um, but through the juggler fight and is going to be pushing the block that Randall's pushing right now. Uh, and then we're going to be going on to the last real, possibly time wasty fight of the run. Uh, which... Head Bob's going for one control on Naomi as well. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Crunch no drop. Waiting for the guy to pass. Sorry, Amber, bad cycle. <laughs> Um, oh, 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 did not then, make it. No, Kanga hit the range. Well, well, valiant attempt though, head bob for sure. And if you're head bob, you really have nothing to lose here, right? You need to make some risks to, to try and catch up. And yeah, play. at this point, yeah. he's already in line to get zero points, so it's like, I've got nothing to lose. Mm hmm. Valiant attempt. Did, did what she needed to do. No, absolutely. I I don't think that was wrong either. It was risky, and sometimes risks don't pay off, right? They're gambles for a reason. Mm -hmm. Hits the range second time. Well, hits the pump and hits the range next time round. All right. Well, let's keep it moving because, you know, there's still a race to play. And uh, Randall's not having a great time on Caroline. Got put to sleep right now. Um, I think that means that a, a pump might have got missed. Oh, no, it didn't go for it yet. Okay. As Amber does Alexis skip and comes onto the Caroline fight as well. Oh, that's a miss and another put to sleep. Another sleep. Amber oh. might cr close the ground a little bit. This is and this is the thing. Like head bob lost time in that oh, fight. No. <gasps> that's two, oh, no. three pump misses. Oh no, Randall's getting Carolined. Like if Amber gets Carolined, head bob has a way back into this. Head bob has a way back into this. It, it's very, very close. It depends now on what happens on Amber's screen right now. Are we going to hit the pump? We it's hit the pump. The pump the hit pump. the range. I don't think it's a range. I think it, 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 Jinx is dead. Amber has taken the lead. It's not saying much because it's barely a lead, but it is a lead. Holy. Stormy does not want to wake up. Head Bob is wor working on the juggler now. So after this, like depending on how long this takes for Jinx. Oh, Jinx is down. So Randall... Um, had a bit of a rough time, but is is still in this because he's only now what two Pokemon behind? Two Pokemon yeah. behind. But yeah, that <laughs> what 36, 30 second lead. God, that it's gone now. These runners are just we're gonna one C into a lead four, and we better hope we don't get any crits. Mm. And this is why Amber was incentivized to go for the one control on Naomi because all it takes is a couple of bad turns here or there, and all of a sudden. They've been paid out for it. And that's why Hubbub did the exact same thing, because you've got you at this point, right? Um, mm -hmm. And with Amber taking all these risks, they might pay off. It's still too early to tell because there's too much that could go wrong. Someone could miss menu. Someone could decide to 2C and it won't pay off. Someone e could e die. Is, there's still e so many things. Yeah, E4 is not plain sailing. Uh, whether it be Gen 1, Gen 3, Gen 7, Kanto E4 is never... Uh, it's never a fun time. Yeah, we got to push this boulder twenty times, and if we if we get too many dumb it, like spawns of Rapidash, that might slow us up or down too. Why did they still make you push this boulder so many times? I don't know, and it's so <laughs> slow in this game. It gives you gives your time to boulder. mentally reset, mentally prepare, figure out your IVs and your calcs for the Elite Four potentially. Thankfully, everyone has good starts, right? We, we know yeah. that they're enabled it in that way. It's just, okay, what are my specific stats? What does that unlock for me? What ranges, what strategies can I go for? And maybe, you know, for Randall, pull ahead. Amber, okay, do I play to, do I have the ability to play it a little more safe? Do I still need to keep pressuring here? 
Actually, that's a good question. What are our special attacks on these stars? I feel like Headbob, Headbob was, uh, Randall's was the best, right? And then Headbob and then Amber? I think so, yeah. Because um, I'm just thinking about going to plus six on Lorelei. Um, because I think it's 138 special attack that you can go for plus four. Help me out, chat. My notes don't. My, my notes have safe strats in them, rather than risky stuff. Uh, well, let me see what I've got. Uh, 139. 139? Well, 138 is 100% for Lapras. Okay, that's what I have in my notes. I wasn't super sure. Headbox uh, should be leveling up here. Yeah, so but, we'll see but his. Jinx. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. 136 there for headbutt. Oh, oh crap, I missed it. Did, it. did you see if um Amber grabbed the full restore? No. Okay. So, going for maybe 2C Agatha. In, but, which honestly is not that much slower, so I respect the play. Oh, uh, she, she, apparently she did pick it up. She did, okay. Uh, so, if you're not at plus 6 for the Jinx, uh, plus 4 Scold at 139 is a 13 of 16. Okay. Uh, uh, 140, 141 is 14 of 16, 142 is 15, and you need to be 143 plus. Yeah, 143 plus for plus four. We'll yeah. have to see what happens here. Amber's going in right now, but Randall is right on her heels. And Bob with a good Caroline as well, so still staying in it. If if these runners die to doing ris quote unquote risky strats in Elite Four, Head Bob is there. Yes, with Scald. Um, yeah, if you've got notes, pull them up. They might be relevant. This, especially at this point in the game, where that one point can matter so much in how, when, in whether you go for these ranges or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I very much have got the notes glued to my, to my. Second Someone um, in chat has said that I think they're at Amber has one thirty-two special attack, so it looks like Randall might be able to go for plus four. I don't think that Amber can. Yeah, Amber does have to go. I think that, um, based on what I'm seeing, Dragonite's going to be a range, but I think they have to go for it. This is... Oh, it's sweaty. Get your fans out, everybody. Hold on to your butts. Looking like maybe 20 seconds going into Lorelei fight between the two. Yeah, I am I am positively vibrating with, with nervous intensity. Yeah, hold your butts, everybody. Just one Pokemon separating Randall and Amber right now. This is not, I don't think this is quite sub three pace, but it's it's gonna be like low threes. Like 301 maybe? For both of these runners? For a race, that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think mm -hmm. last time the fastest time was a 301. Uh, bear in mind that Randall did have to take a backup EV as well. So yeah. on the one hand, it means you know you're getting good EV, but on the other time, you're losing, you know, 45 seconds to having to take the backup EV. Yeah, but who knows how much time you're going to lose for having a bad EV, though? So I, I respect the play, and keeping in mind that Randall is this close with yeah. a backup, like well, absolutely thing. incredible. He he knew that, uh, like it wasn't. Uh, he didn't think about it. Bad. Okay, not taking it. Uh, and reset. it looks like Head Bob did skip the full restore, so Head Bob is just looking to finish this darn race. Will two see Agatha? It's like Randall was able to make up about five seconds in that fight. I have him about fifteen seconds difference right now. Thirteen by Iron and Chat. Probably for the extra X item, would be my guess. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, only 44 HP for Amber. Uh, it, it's not a, it's that's not that's a range. range. It's not a range. Don't say the word. And Randall won't get it either. Okay, so no worries on Bruno. We're just having a normal Bruno fight over here. Onyx, everyone's favorite fighting Pokemon. 
the anime makes Onyx look like such a good Pokemon, and it really well, isn't. Well, Amber got an AV in special attack there, so 133 special attack. I think Dragonite's still going to be a range, but it won't be as bad as it was looking a second ago. And 142 for Randall. For, for Ran so for Randall, the Dragonite is guaranteed and doesn't have to have that little sweaty moment at the end of Lance. Amber, unfortunately, just has to go for it. It is too risky, too seeing would be too slow. We've got to just go for it right now. There's maybe time to save, but even that's in question. Yeah, this is incredibly close. We're not. We're, we're, I'm trying to fill air so we don't get DMCA'd, but it's very tense in this commentator booth at the moment. It's, it's honestly. Oh, is this one can... of the the songs to DMCA strikes? It, it can. Be. Oh, <laughs> don't want to take the risk. Very yeah, thrilled, exactly. Especially for a race as close as this. Good thing. Yeah, there. deserves to have eyes on it. Before the level up, Amber is 12 out of 16 on Dragonite. That's not bad. Uh, means on the level up, it'll be significantly closer, most likely. Um, looks like Amber is currently having a normal Agatha fight. Uh, ooh, power of power love! Power of love! That's huge. Didn't get that the defense. Huge. Power of love means you Saves break it out of the paralysis. Doesn't need to Randall use the full with... restore. Didn't even need to pick it up. Oopsie. Uh, Randall, Randall got it Randall as well. Randall also got it. What is this race? <laughs> Tree so is the path love. of legends. I was like, oh, Amber's gonna save time. Nope. Randall's also getting it. They're fighting tooth and nail on the and so is the game. The game is like, we wanna win. And actually, uh Randall didn't even take damage, so he doesn't have to heal. And whereas Amber well, they'll both have to menu because they both need to use the elixirs. That's so Oh <gasps> no! Randall, Randall, did next speed. Randall did next speed. Oh no! Oh, because he got he got the power of love a turn early, and he didn't next speed because he was trying to go. Oh, that sucks. Amber's through the fight, I think. Yeah, I don't know how fast you have to be to guarantee that you outspeed the. Uh, Amber could pull out two C right now. Amber's comfortably in first. Head Bob's right there to, to take second. I don't know if Amber's watching anymore. Oh, Amber's watching. Or maybe not. Yeah, because Amber could now go full safety. Yep, yeah, there's Lapras. Uh, Amber's watching. Amber knows what just happened. Amber's just going to safety do the end because they have a comfortable lead. Uh, Head Bob mm -hmm. is only on Bruno, which is too, too far behind to have 2C catch up. Oh, what a devastating end to our uh, oh. gripping the edge of our seats. Uh, but what a fantastically close race this has been. And there's still a chance for this to go wrong for Amber, so it's not over just yet, folks. There is still I don't know what I don't know what Randall's speed value is at the moment. Well, regardless, it was an incredibly valiant effort for Randall just to try and get on through that fight as fast as he could. Especially up to Carol. Through. Oh god, yeah. That <laughs> Carol did not go well for him. Yeah, it was... So many risks had to be taken for this one, but... Uh, it looks like my pickums are going to be in shambles. Honestly, I will... If every race is as close as this, I will happily throw oh, away any pickums. Yeah, the, the pickums don't matter when, they're this, when there's this good let's go on the screen. Oh yeah. Yeah, you need one. You need to be super, like, crazy fast. 155 to outspeed the the, the Gengar. It was close, apparently, but not close enough. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now that Randall's used all those X items, he's getting turnarounds on Lorelei, so that's going to be a little bit slow, especially on Bruno. But mm -hmm. here we are, right? Uh, Amber doing some fun little strats just to <laughs> just up the Lapras HP just enough so it doesn't die until Champ. 
136 special attack, so it would have been real... I don't know what that range is. Yep, and even head bobs too soon now with uh, yeah. Gold Duck as the secondary option here. I don't like the Gold Duck battle. No? Right. 14 no, no. 16. Just the way it ha holds its arms out like that, I find it quite unnerving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the choice of Gold Duck, not Gold Duck fine. itself as a... <laughs> no, no problem with that. Yeah, screw Golduck. Not even psychic type. Get out of here. Yeah. Now we'll never know if this army was going to hit the Dragonite range, but it's okay. It goes down. Well, for 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 the drama, we'll say absolutely. Of course, it was. I have all yes. the faith in this star. And Randall's got 146 special attack at 53, so wouldn't have had a problem there. Mm -hmm. uh, all three players got Chansey, actually. It was pretty rad. Uh, Amber and Head Bob picked it up in uh, Moon, and Randall picked it up on Route 10. Yeah, it was something to behold. Even a safety save from Amber. Not Amber's got idea. all the time in the world, honestly, so I don't hate it. You just gotta secure that first place, and even though 2C is a lot safer, it is still not guaranteed, because Air Slash just gosh darn sucks. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, Randall might be getting ready for some third place memes. Uh, because I think what's coming is something called Pump Agatha. <laughs> Well, new Amber, you getting ready to become the new champion. Nice. You can't spell champion without Amber. Don't. Is that true? Ah! No, you just get champion. Ah, I see. Ooh. That was a lot of damage. Yeah, obviously you got high physical defense, but not so good for death. Yeah, apparently. But, no crit, we're fine. Mm -hmm. That's it, I knew it could do it. That's the um, the hard part of the champ. Now Amber just has to click on all the right moves, uh, and we should be good. And now we'll watch as uh, Randall memes his way through Agatha and tries to pump everything. Uh, make sure you X-speed, Randall. <laughs> That's the first Pokemon down. Oh no, there it goes. Okay, so memes are over. Randall's gonna try and finish the race now, probably. But we always love to see a good pump, Agatha. Yeah, it was, hey, it was worth it for the content. Absolutely, when 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 stuff goes wrong like it did here, you, you just gotta pump Agatha. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta pump Agatha. Yeah, we approve of the Valiant effort. We always, lo we love Valiant efforts and we love content. Valiant effort by all three about it absolutely hey bear in mind that this is still going to be a, a cracking time for randall even with even with the death and the backup with two, yeah. technically two deaths and that cringe caroline yeah head bob getting ready to face the champion as well And that's the slow bro, bro dead for Amber. So I think this is going to be a high 301. Wow. I think, yeah, a low 301, I think. GG's to Amber. That was an incredibly close race that was won by Amber due to some unfortunate RNG, honestly. Um, just something that the power of love on Agatha kind of cinched it for Amber and kind of threw off Randall's groove. So... This might be a new fastest time, actually, you're right. Uh, yeah. Low 301, so that's going to be a, a tournament fastest time for Amber. Um, and an absolutely incredible nail-biting race. Ran Amber didn't get a Rhyhorn. So, incredible yeah. play, incredible adaptation mm -hmm. from all of our players. And it Amber has earned this first place. Yeah, 30141 set by uh, Siam was the fastest time in the first round. And this is, uh, is going to beat that. 
Uh, Randall didn't throw. Randall was trying to trying to stay to catch up to Amber, um, but miscalculated his speed. And that's a three o one o three, almost a three o o for is- Amber. Big GGs. Congratulations. G freaking G. And, and Headbob just took down Champ's Pidgeot, so we're almost done through that one too, and Headbob's gonna get a very good second place time. Yeah, this could be uh, probably low 303s, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Uh, Randall might be a little bit further behind than that, but no worries. And yeah, chat's right, Caroline really did decide this race. Um, it happened to Amber last tournament. Uh, where they lost a race because Caroline decided to be a jerk, and this this year it happened to Randall. Uh, speaking of Amber, it looks like Amber has joined us. GG's Amber. GG. What? GG, congrats. What a race. What a race. We what were a race. we were sweating right up until that last power of love. I don't know oh, when, when you were watching. Right. Yeah, I bet. Oh, how'd that run go, Amber? That I okay. Thirty poke. Rock pedal Holy moly! That's, that's, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. what else can you really say? I've never, really? I've never had that before. Like the first time. It I've was ever incredible. Been that high. Yeah. Um, very little went wrong for me. I would say. Um, I say the only thing that really went poorly for me was having to reset route two like a lot for an Oddish. You also didn't get a Rhyhorn, but that wasn't yeah, really that bad. Rhyhorn were kind of the big one. That's probably what lost me the most time from this yeah. run. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were little things like missing the hydro on, like, Samuel, but like, mm-hmm. I just got, like, everything to spawn. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. And you definitely um, had some sweaty moments there doing your best to catch up to Randall, but it, it paid off. So yeah. that was that was very impressive. I couldn't believe how far like ahead Randall was. Kind of, I like so I generally don't check the stream at all until I get my Starmie. Yep. Good, good you call. Play, like you're not gonna play differently anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. And I was, I was, I knew I was on like good pace, not like I'm um, like you know with world record pace or anything, but I knew my pace is pretty good. And I was like, I'm probably like ahead. And if I'm not ahead, I'm very like pretty much tied. About and then that, I, yeah. I evolved my star. I mean, I looked at stream and Randall was done Ted, and I was like, yeah. "How are you this far ahead?" <laughs> he he was really going. It it was quite impressive. Like he had the, he had a sub two Blaine, from what I remember. Oh my gosh, yeah. The amount of spawns and catches that both of you had just really good RNG in that front. I think to, to oh, I did not get that. Yeah, I didn't see what like anybody else's kind of spawns. Well, or her, all three of you got a Chansey. Oh, okay. Uh, Randall got his on Route 10. Wow. Uh, oh, and there he is. GG's head, Bob. Hello. GG's got a really good race time. GG. Thank you. Yeah, that would have been the fourth fastest time in round one. Very That's solid okay. time there, head, Bob. Yeah, Such how'd that run time. go, head, Bob? How are you feeling? Um, I think it went, like, okay overall. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, I definitely was, like, much more locked in in the early game than last time. But then after the shit that happened on Angus Khan and Rock Tunnel, I just, yeah. like, didn't really care anymore. It was, like, very demotivating. Yeah, you had some rough times in the mid-game, didn't you? I mean, that was most of it. Yeah. yeah I definitely, yeah. But I definitely wasn't playing as well. For sure. It's okay, we were all distracted trying to watch the race between Randall and Amber. Yeah. I still could have PB'd at the end, but once you mm-hmm. know, he killed me. Yeah, don't blame you at all for going for that, though. We I, we thought that that was what you had to do, so I think, it made I sense. Mean, I, I, I just knew that that was what I was going to do. Just like, if it didn't work, then just no reason not to TC before, just to get a good time yep. in case. Because I'm probably going to be on bubble now. Yeah, well, Probably. you could. It depends on how this t- this round goes, honestly, because it's the median time of all racers. So 303 might be enough to get you two points. I'd, I'd be gonna really surprised 303 if it's not. Get you two points. Like I can, yeah. I can, I'll pretty much guarantee mm-hmm. that. Well, like, I mean, it's pretty close. Okay. Sorry, I, I misspoke. I was, I was, I was gonna do that anyway, expecting to get third, so that I could get like 
a better end of like the average times with like I assume the six points is probably gonna be the bubble for yeah for round two so it's gonna be super impressive regardless um, like, yeah. this was a nail biting race right up until that that um, star me fainted on on Randall's screen so yeah. I mean oh. did that affect how you were approaching things knowing that because Amber and Randall would just be going hell for leather all the way through. Yes, but... exactly. Yeah, like yeah. I, I just I, I didn't expect that one of them would die, but like that was like my second place con was one That's of them That's the way you win, right? Like that one of them dying is how you get back in that race. I was genuinely so nervous because like normally like me and Randall were both on like like wild race times. But like you don't expect to be on that time, and then also have Ed Bob like right behind you. Cause like if yeah. I die on like Dragonite, like basically if me and Randall are tied and I die on Dragonite, like I get third in that race pretty much. Oh, so pretty I sure. was sorry. Go on. I'm pretty sure that's my best pace like ever at that point. I think I think Tucker said you were on PB pace right before you went to Victory Road. So. No, 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 no. I'm saying like really early on. Like I had oh, a okay. really, really good start. Well, that's it was very impressive. I have to say, like. Um, I know, Amber, before um, Randall died on Agatha, you were worried about even hitting that Dragonite range. Yeah, um, my, my special attack, I mean, it was, like, decently favorable, but I, I, I would guess it was probably around, like, 13 out of 16. I think I think Ergo out. told us 14 out of 16. 14 out of 16, okay, yeah. Which was good, but That's you could still miss I thought it was that. going to be. Yeah. And, oh, Randall just finished up champ, so GG's to Randall. It'll be, like, a high 308, I think, for him. Um, so hopefully we'll get him in here shortly to, to talk about that. Uh, cause yeah, whew, what a, what a race. Uh, is everybody awake now? Great. <laughs> um, so Amber, uh, I think mm -hmm. we still have a lot of the races to go, but who are you most looking forward to facing next round? And who are you least looking forward to facing next round? Uh, I mean, well, let me, okay. Let me pull up who we got. Let me pull up. Yeah. Yeah. One second. I mean, just off the top of my head, I don't know, like, anyone anyone who gets six points is going to be, like, one of the top <laughs> yeah. So everyone's scary, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, it's true, yeah. This is, like, the tip of the iceberg for, for people. Yeah, like... Like, it's around. For sure, yeah. So anyone that wins two races is going to be scary, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, I, I would probably say... If I had to pick two people that have been... Scary ish to me, honestly. It would probably be Saiyan and Teapot. Yep. Both yeah. very good races. For sure, yeah. Both uh, fellow members of the Sub 3 Club, as it were. Um, both in like really good recent form as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some very scary competition. And, uh, yeah, and both of them showed round one too, just like how good they are. Yeah, and uh, GG's to Randall, 30839. I don't know if he's here with us right now. Um, but that was quite the race. Yeah, that would be still, but that was below the median time for, for round one. Yeah, it's true. Hey, Randall. Hey. How you doing? Randall, you do. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it, no, there's nothing to be sorry about. Like, I, I threw you on that. I mean, it, it just sucks. I don't know. I, I, I feel you. Like it can still suck. It, Caroline kicked you in the butt, and then and then you 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 made a little mistake on Agatha. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping to try to catch up. Probably could have like took a second to think about what I was doing, but that like, was so tense. Remember, like but... that's some of the pressure that comes with racing, though, right? When it's yeah. that close yeah. and having someone on your heels. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's anything to feel bad about. I think that, well, can keeping in mind, Randall, that you were ahead for almost that entire race and you got a backup, right? So, yeah. super impressive showing. And next round, you're going to be in the three point bracket and you're going to scare everybody that has three points. Yeah. That's yeah, no, I, I, I know that. Like, I'm in the three point bracket and we all know I'm going to have some fun with that. Absolutely, you are. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, one question that we had earlier actually was, how did everybody choose what starter you were going to use for the race? Oh, um, we, we didn't do anything like fancy, I think. I think we just like played the games we were most comfortable with. Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, we kind of decided 
I, I mean, I didn't practice EV at all. And then we talked about it collectively, like, <laughs> like, just leave it how okay. we normally do it. I think Randall did a, did a coin flip before the start of the race. Yeah, yeah I haven't you, really been playing uh, Pika in forever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I was just like, you know what? I'll I'll just I'll just pull up Google coin flip and then just flip a coin to see what happens. Got EV. Honestly, this run shouldn't have been as good as it was, and it was well ahead of PB, which was dumb. But it, yeah. For a while there, good. you might have been on sub three pace, which was very impressive. I feel like oh, both yeah. of you were for a little while. Yeah, I think uh, I think they were for I a little was, while. I might have been on the bubble. It was like close for me. But it was very close. I mean, the fact that I was there and then I look at Randall and Randall is like a minute ahead of me in Mansion. Yeah. It's like, I could not believe how far ahead Randall was at that point. I didn't look at the stream until until Mansion and I was like blown away how far behind I was considering I felt it, like my run overall was like not your great. Your run was like really fine. good. Yeah, Randall was <laughs> I killing can't it. Imagine, I cannot imagine being on like 302, 303 pace. And then looking at my opponent and seeing that like that, <laughs> yeah. I think it it's part of it is just a, a credit to everyone's knowledge and just the other thing that was very similar. All three of you got chances. I, I'm not sure if everyone recognized that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not checking the race until uh, star or until mansion, right? Yeah. Um, but I think that also helped to make this really competitive and helped unlock some of the things as well. What, what was you going through? Amber? Because uh, I, I know Randall got in a row 10. Yep. I got mine in Moon. Yeah, both of you got it in okay. Moon. And okay, when I, I saw that you. and I compared it to the experience I was on, I'm just like, I'm absolutely doomed to this race. Yeah. <laughs> it was not good for a while. And then I saw the Route 10 Chansey and I was just like, I'm probably going to get it. Because at this point, what's, what's the difference going to be if I actually get any breakouts? Well, it didn't break out, but still. Yeah, I think something this race did is it shows the benefit of the of the three-person race format because you've got to think about okay i'm not just comparing against one other runner there's two other players there you know how good they are as well so you know as soon as am i i not need to push not only to make sure that i win but also because if the other person slips up then whoever's in third quote unquote at the moment like they they could very well leapfrog both of us so it it makes i think things tight all the way through I also think um, this is like showcasing some of the benefits of the Swiss rounds because yes, with this format, yes. you get like better route races more often Absolutely. like this. Yeah, yeah, this has been fantastic. We had to wait until uh, really close to the end. Like I'm, I'm thinking about last year when I commentated for Amber versus Triv versus TPAT. We had to wait so late into the turning to get something that spicy. But this is round two, and that race was fantastic. Um, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far as a spectator. I don't know if it's better or worse for the runners, but. No, I love uh, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I got obliterated in the end, but like, this is what I wanted. I wanted to go up against the best and that's what I got. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's exciting. Yeah. And this is also a little bit less intimidating for new people after round one, because now they're going to be up against people who are in similar boats to them, like relatively yeah. new to the game. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, My thought as well with the format is that like, even if you have like one race that like doesn't go very well for you, it doesn't like feel like you're like out of it or like true. on the bubble of being eliminated if you have like a, a poor race or something. Yeah. That's what I like too. Because as we've seen, Absolutely. you can really easily get a bad race out of a good race. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. What what a time. Awesome. Yeah, any thank you thoughts? all so much. I was going to say, yeah, any final days. thoughts from uh, any of the runners that you wanted to share? Uh, 30 Pope Rock Tunnel Enter. <laughs> that, that's the way, for sure. That, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, I regret not catching the Kangaskhan. Let it be known. I regret not catching the Kangaskhan. Okay, Con. good, because chat was upset. <laughs> I didn't realize my parody was off until, like, a little bit later. So, like, I actually yeah. just, like, fixed stuff. Nice catch on the Rapidash, though. That was smart thinking. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, I just had to do that. I was confused at first, but then I realized. Uh, all right, well, let's hand it over and get tech to show us what's coming up next. Also, shout-outs to our tech person for this run, Dynam. Dynam is great. Thank you yeah. so much for all your hard work. Keeping things uh, checking behind the scenes. Uh, this is what we were talking about, by the way, with, with Swiss is great. Uh, three races tomorrow. 
uh, kind of two late morning uh, US times, kind of afternoon Europe time, and then uh, and then the quote unquote late night race. But both of these races are donkers. Uh, starting with uh, both, all three of them, Etiquette, Teapot, Cyan, two of the three races that Amber kind of pinpointed as like real as real hot form runners coming into that one in Etiquette. And Etiquette kind of is the, also there. Yeah, one of the OGs of, 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 of this game really like did a huge amount, especially early on, for kind of putting it on the map as a speed game. That's sick. That starts at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then uh, that that second race is kind of they were uh, the runners who finished second in in round one, but three again really good runners all finishing with uh, with kind of with sub three ten times in that round. So that's going to be that's going to be a banger as well. Uh, Jay Taddles, Furist, and and Ergo, and I know that uh, they've been like PBing in the run up as well. So ominous. And then we finish the day with the casual etchy headstrong aspect. So you know how do you like not just be glued onto PSR all day. I don't know. Especially after today's race. If it's a sign of things to come for round two, buckle up. It's yes. going to be a really good day tomorrow. Uh, if you're looking for Let's Go content, you've got tons of it. Uh, all right. I think I think that's it from us. We got all that settled out. I think we had a planned to raid target. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. And uh, turns out Chansey is good. Thank we'll, you, we'll commentators. See you next time. Yeah, thank thanks you. for the great race. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dynam, for being on tech. And, you know, thanks, Com, for having a good race. Thanks for letting us restream. <laughs>